or hot. All right, we are uh, opening the public session portion of the, of the meeting. We started the evening tonight in executive session where the board discussed strategies with respect to collective bargaining updates by a town manager relative to police, fire, and dispatch, strategy with respect to litigation with respect to NSTAR Eversource, and uh, we also conducted strategy sessions and preparations for, non for negotiations with non-union personnel relative to the town manager. I'd like to start the meeting as we always do with public session, public forum. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Do we have any takers this evening? Okay, seeing no brave souls in the audience, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Um, and we are going to do the following. Uh, item one, minutes. The board will consider accepting the public session minutes of July 29, 2015. Two is a parade permit. The board will consider approving the following parade permit from the Michael Lisnar Respite Center, 18th Annual Michael's 5K, starting at the Town Common, ending at the Town Common on Saturday, October 17, 2015, no street closings. Third is a gift. The board will accept the following gifts to the town. $50 donation in memory of Mrs. Irene Riley from Maureen Kreischer, and a $75 don donation from Susan Gould to the Hoppington Ambulance Fund, a $5 anonymous gift to the Develop Veterans Celebration Committee received in memory of Ray Draw, and $72,500 in sponsorship gifts for the purposes of the town's 300th anniversary celebration. Third is Central Mass Regional Stormwater Coalition IMA. The board will consider reauthorizing an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Spencer and 30 other communities to assist with NPDES MS4 compliance. The cost to the town will be $4,000 to implement. Fifth is a resignation. The board will accept the resignation of Marie Eldridge from the Permanent Building Committee effective August 6, 2015. Sixth is a street naming change approval. The board will consider a request from Crosswinds LLC to change the street name of the Hayden Woods subdivision from Buckland Lane to Davenport Lane. And seven, Rockwood Meadows conservation restriction. The board will consider approving a conservation restriction of 25.87 acres off of School Street to be granted to the Hopkinton Area Land Trust. Would anyone like to break anything out? Mr. Chair, the so, item specific to the gifts for the 300 celebration, please. Okay, so item three will break out. Jamie. Five, please. Item five, Jamie. good one to break out. Anything else? Okay, the board will, uh, the board, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of items three and five. Okay. Motion second for the discussion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting? Yeah. That's unanimous. Item three, Mr. Herr. Uh, I think it would be uh, appropriate to read the list of the donations that were given for the 300th anniversary, uh, if that's okay. I would be thrilled if you would. Blackstone Valley Wealth Management contributed $500. Carboni's Restaurant contributed $500. CVS contributed $5,000. Crosspoint contributed $1,000. EMC contributed $15,000. E.L. Harvey contributed $2,050. That might be $2,500. Faith Community Church contributed $2,500. Gasset Building contributed $1,000. Gorman Richardson Lewis Architects contributed $1,000. The Hopkinton Independent contributed $1,000. Legacy Farm contributed 5000 The Marathon Fund Committee contributed 5000 McIntyre Loam contributed 1500 Metro West YMCA contributed 1000 The Middlesex Savings Bank contributed 1000 Merrick O'Connell contributed 1000 The New England Money Handling Organization contrib contributed 1000 Perkin Elmer contributed 5000 Paul Phipps Insurance contributed 5000 Scott's Landscaping contributed 2500 Select Energy Development contributed 2500 and the Richmond Group contributed 1000 Webster First Credit Union contributed 1000 and Weston Nurseries contributed $500. Thank you for reading that, and thanks to all those folks for their generous gifts. Yeah, those are great gifts. Okay. Uh, any other comments, Mr. Herr? No, thank you. Okay. So um, uh, unless there's any other questions, anything else on item 3? Okay, so Chair, I'll entertain a motion to approve item 3 of the uh, consent agenda, the gifts. So moved. Second. Motion second for the discussion. Uh, Mr. Chair, will there be letters going out to these organizations? Yes, there always are. Okay. Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting? That's unanimous. Item five, resignation. Mr. Sestari, I guess you got to it first. Uh, yeah, you know, I just want to thank Marie uh, for all of her contributions uh, uh, over the years to the town. And uh, I know that there was 
little send-off recently. I wasn't able to attend it um, for Marie and Ron. Uh, the two of them have contributed uh, incredibly over the years to the town. But, um, uh, it, well, you know, the, the, I, was, I was going to say that oftentimes uh, maybe Marie is uh, uh, a little bit in, in the shadow of Ron's contributions and accomplishments, but I can't say that because uh, she, she clearly has a spotlight of her own. And uh, I'd just like to personally thank both of them uh, for the help that they've given me personally over the years, and, uh, but most importantly for the help and the contributions that they've made to the town. Thank you for that. You know, Todd put it very eloquently. I just want to make sure that we always thank people that, that dedicate so much of their time to the town and, and, made it, and making it a better place to live. Much better than when they came in as, as now that they yeah, put their time in. Okay. Yeah, they lived here for 37 years. Uh, and, uh, and Friday, I, I actually did go to the van. We gave them a nice set of the marathon, the, the 300th anniversary uh, yeah, prints, I guess, is what they are, frame set. So they do have something to hang on the wall down in South Carolina. Any comments? No, nope, all set, thanks. Their kids must have just graduated high school. Oh, no, they're long <laughs> no, no, no. They're long gone. They've been long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so with that, the chair will uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve item five, the resignation of Marie Eldridge from the Permanent Building Committee. So, so moved. Second. second. Motion second for the discussion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Present not voting. That's unanimous. Okay, item four on the agenda, 9 Church Street, Grift of Land, an action item. Uh, the board will consider accepting a gift of land for 9 Church Street for the town's library renovation and expansion project. So let me just start off with a, with a little setup. So... Um, uh, people may not know, until a couple of years ago now, the library was actually a privately owned enterprise. Um, it was a building owned by a, a group of, of trustees who had control of it, and they, and they let the town use it as a library, basically. But several, many years ago now, and I, I think Sarah will tell us how long ago it was, um, in a very thoughtful move, they acquired the land up the street on Church Street, um, which is a triple-decker building, um, in the thought that someday the library might want to expand and this could provide a possible uh, avenue or, or a pathway to do it. So it was a remarkably forward-looking um, decision. And for all these years, this group has, um, has kept this building, has rented it out, um, but has always uh, had in mind it would be used eventually for the library. And several years ago now, they actually struck agreement with the town that once the new library building was approved, once the town took, took control of the, the library building, which it did a few years back, and once the town decided to build a new library, they would uh, donate the building free and clear to the town. So this is a, an agreement that was done uh, three or four years ago now. Um, and uh, and the time, uh, and I'm sure they thought it might never come, <laughs> has now come when all this has come to pass, and we're getting ready to start the library building, and uh, and so now they're coming in this evening to gift to the town officially um, the land and the building on it, uh, so that we may make use of that uh, for the new coming library. So with that, let me turn it over to, uh, I don't know if it's you or, which yeah okay, so there you go, please up to the podium and. And um, tell me what I got wrong. <laughs> it was in 2000, um, the trustees, before Len Holman and Sarah and myself were even on the board, they purchased um, Nitric Street for that exact reason to expand the library, which they thought was probably going to happen in four or five years. <laughs> and here we are in 2015, and so excited that there will be groundbreaking this year. So it did take 15 years um, through lots of tenants that actually wasn't with it 30 something years. Um, uh, we'd like to provide the town with that um, ability to now move forward and build a new library. So Thank you. Soon. Okay. Is it signed by you? Do you have to sign it over? I'll, I'll sign it over us. Okay. Over. And town council is good with it, right? Obviously. So. Okay, good. So the, the motion, the job now for the board, I guess, is to vote to accept the gift. Um, and Tom, do we, need to, we don't need to do anything with the deed tonight, right? Or do we? Okay. Sarah, Len, anything to say, to add? To? Oh, please. Yes, sir. Please. As a private citizen, this is true and remarkable event. 
captured it, but I'd, I'd like to lend it. These were excellent. Hockington is blessed with so many citizens who care deeply about our well-being of our community. Over the past several years, I've had the opportunity and privilege to witness at close range the volunteerism by certain individuals who spent vast amounts of personal time as trustees of our public library. This gift bestowed tonight represents the extraordinary efforts of these volunteers. And I wish to thank them personally for their foresight to purchase this land, their selfless acts to maintain the property for so many years at no cost to the town or to the library. And lastly, for their community spirit in providing this valuable piece, which is critical to Hopkinton's library expansion. So to Lenny, Linda, Sarah, the current directors, board, and all those trustees that came before you, uh, a job truly well done, and I'm certain our community is eternally grateful. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Are you good? Okay. All right. So, um, so without further ado, and with deep thanks to the three of you and, and all the other folks who did this along the way, the chair will, will uh, entertain a motion to accept the gift of land of 9 Church Street for the town's library renovation and expansion project. So moved. Second. Okay, motion second. Do we have any further discussion? Do we want to add in the deeds book number to the motion? Do we need to add the deeds book number to the motion? We do. I've got it at Deeds Go Book 33452, page number 211. Okay. Do you want to the rest of this too? Pursuant to the purchase and sale agreement dated January 25, 2011, the town meeting voted on Article 50 of the May 4, 2010 annual town meeting. Why not? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's in the motion. So that's the motion. Mm -hmm. We're good. Motion second still. We're good. Okay. All right. You're, you're good with that? Wasn't really spontaneous enough, but I'll take it. Exactly. Uh, further discussion? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting. That passes unanimously. Thank you all again. We're Good very job. Excited. All right. Thank you. That was a landmark moment that just went. I know. That's why I was. I was going. I wanted to read the whole thing because it was. Uh, it's. It, it's a big thing. It's huge. It's huge. Um, they did a great job getting us there. Okay. Um, next item, tonight's fun, a proclamation. The board will consider approving a proclamation for Eagle Scout Gregory Riemann from Troop 18 in Milford. Um, so the Riemanns are, are repeat visitors here to the Board of Selectmen for Eagle Scouts. Congratulations to you again. Um, let me start by Cheryl ask a, we entertain a motion to approve the issuance of this proclamation to uh, Gregory Riemann. Um, can I get a motion for that to approve the proclamation? So moved. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimous. Okay. So with that, with, the, with that stuff out of the way, can I invite you up and your parents up if they like and introduce yourself? Tell us why you're here, what you did. Um, boy, I'll ask you some questions. Short quiz, and then we'll get going. <laughs> okay. I'll be taking notes. Exactly. Uh, so my name is Greg Ryan. Um, my Eagle project was to work for the Greyhound Friends Shelter in Hoppington, Massachusetts, and I built a storage shed for them. Um, and it was a two-part process. It started with me raising money in order to buy the supplies for the shed. I raised about $1,500 through canned donations, uh, donated sales, of, donated yard sales, um, and working at the Greyhound Friends Shelter at, uh, to get donations from people. And then after raising that money, we, over the summer, I uh, organized scouts in my uh, Boy Scout troop and other volunteers to help build the shed. Um, that was it, yeah. <laughs> That's terrific. All right. Well, congratulations on the big achievement. Let me go to the board and ask if anybody has any questions or comments. Mr. Harris. How ahead. long did it take from start to finish? Uh, I officially started the project in March, and then I finished in March. So it took wow. about a year the whole time. Yeah. About a year. It was the construction was done by the end of August after that March. And how many people were involved in it with you? I think you might have mentioned it, but how many total? Did you um, work probably with? about 25 people total. 25. So, and my job as the Eagle Scout was not to do everything; it was to organize many people. So sometimes I would 
uh, ask people to help me with things or ask them to help me uh, work with the uh, with the construction because I've never built a shed before. So that's great. That's great. So it, this is my briefcase here, and I carry it with me a lot of places where I go. And in my briefcase, believe it or not, amongst other things, I have. Some will laugh at this. My resume. And I've always had a written resume with me in my briefcase my entire career. I've only had one job for 30 years, but I've always had a resume in case they threw me out. Um, I've tried to get some other jobs, but uh, I haven't quite pulled that off just yet. But I carry... Uh, I handed out a lot last year. Um, I carry a resume with me. One thing that's missing on my resume that you will get to put on your resume and carry with you the rest of your life is that you're an Eagle Scout. And that is an awesome thing. It's really awesome. And it's missing on mine. I'm jealous that it's going to be on yours. I'm thrilled that it's going to be on yours. And uh, I congratulate you for a job well done. Thank That's you. great. And uh, if you want to share your resume with me someday, I'll be happy to circulate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Mr. Martin. What was your biggest challenge? Um, well, both of my older brothers are Eagle Scouts themselves. And so from the age of 11, I've been watching them go through this whole uh, experience themselves. And I got to watch them turn from what I saw as, uh, you know, my older brother being, you know, 11, year old, 11 years old themselves to the so-called adults that completed their own Eagle projects. But there was no magic moment where you become an adult. There's no moment where you and the completion of your project, realize that, oh, yeah, I can do this. There's, also, there's always that constant feeling of, oh, man, what if I mess up? What if I waste all these supplies because I've never built a shed before? And so just getting over that first fact of me not realizing that it, I can do this, it's totally doable, was uh, one of the biggest challenges, at least, the one that comes to mind. Great experience. Thank you. Congratulations. Mr. Yeah, are there any companies that you want to put out or, or, or sponsors or people that you want to put a shout out to that may have helped you uh, with donations or that? Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank the Greyhound Friends because they put in a lot of work and were very, very helpful with me when I worked with the project. And secondly, I ordered all of my materials from Koopman Lumber in Whitensville and they were willing to give me a small discount on their supplies in order so that, and that helped me in the end uh, be able to pay for the whole of the shed. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, you know, I think that the, like you were just saying, you don't know when the actual moment is, you know. And and the great thing about this is this is uh, this was always my favorite thing. This and the, and the and the Girl Scouts with the gold medals and everything else. This is just the best thing that for us and, and on this job that we have here. And um, but when you were just talking about the the actual point, and this this is why it's going to help you in the future is that you or you've already you know done the organization to raise the money. And then you had to come up with the plans, and then you know the the building time of you know six or eight months to get it to get it completed. You know you're going to use those skills for the rest of your life, and the benefit that you have by being an Eagle Scout is that you've done it. You know sometimes years earlier than than the person that's going to take go to go to business school and everything else, and then just try and use the knowledge that they picked up in school, but never have done it in a, on a practical basis. So it's something to be incredibly proud of that, uh, you know, and, and the whole family, what your parents, it must be beaming, this three in one family, awesome. Just a, just a great thing. Congratulations. Great job. Over to Mr. Sestari. Greg, congratulations. Um, the rest of my fellow board members cherry picked the questions here, but uh, um, it, is, it is, you know, we can't state enough that it's an incredible accomplishment. And, uh, you know, I know one of the things that I bring up, um, you know, every, every couple times we get an Eagle Scout through here, which Hopkinton, in my estimation, has an incredible number of Eagle Scouts that, uh, that actually get, they, they fulfill that achievement. Um, just the, the, the actual number across the country as a percentage of Scouts is incredibly low. And, uh, and the number that we get coming through the doors here in Hopkinton is really quite impressive. And I think that, and that's not to diminish the accomplishment here, it's to say that we've clearly got a population of uh, outstanding uh, young men such as yourself. 
and people who strive for excellence. So, uh, you know, we, we certainly count you in that group uh, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> but uh, congratulations and, and good luck as you move forward. So the part that stuck with me the most was I've got one Eagle Scout, another one was on his way, and my youngest is sort of right, you know, a couple years behind you. So I feel the pressure you must have, must have ha had on you as you went through this whole process. So congratulations for not cracking. I think it's toughest on the youngest. So, <laughs> so I'm very, it's, it's great. It's, it's very well done. Uh, anything else? Parents, anything to say? Anybody? Sir, yes. Uh, thank you. I uh, currently serve as the scoutmaster for Troop 18 and served so for a couple of years. In total, as assistant scoutmaster, chairman, that sort of thing, I think I've been with the Troop eight years. And now I get to retire because my youngest son is aging out. Uh, but uh, Greg was the 85th Eagle Scout from Troop 18, so over 69 years, 85 Eagle Scouts. Every single one of those Eagle projects is an opportunity that was created by someone who uh, you know, allowed the project to happen, encouraged uh, the scouts. And often <coughs> the scouts need a building permit. Uh, a lot of times these projects happen on public land. I've done a couple of Eagle projects with scouts that are uh, on state park land, for example. And it's great fun to bring the scouts into the building, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, building committee or to get a permit or something like that. The, the, the town uh, staff are wonderful at accommodating the scouts and educating them. And as scoutmaster for the troop, I really appreciate it. I'd like to thank uh, the town on, on behalf of the troop. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. Okay. So without further ado, um, the board would like to present you with a proclamation. Let me read this, and then we'd like to give it to you and maybe get a picture if, uh, if we can. Uh, the town of Hockington, Hockington Board of Selectmen, hereby recognizes Eagle Scout recipient Gregory Ryman, Boy Scout Troop 18, Milford, Mass., Boy Scouts of America. Therefore, the Board of Selectmen of the town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, join with Gregory's family and friends in recognition of his achievement in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Signed under our hand and seal this 11th day of August, 2015, Benjamin L. Palico Chair, John Catino Vice Chair, Todd Sestari, John Mosier, Brian Hart. Congratulations. Okay, uh, next time on the agenda, staff appointments and action item. The board will consider confirming the following town manager staff appointments. Christina Boyan as the town's new payroll manager and Susan Stewart as the volunteer coordinator at the senior center. Mr. Kamala, over to you. important uh, that uh, first I acknowledge the great work by the hiring committee in presenting um, uh, Christine uh, to the town manager as the recommended uh, finalist candidate uh, for this position. Uh, the interview panel included uh, Maria Casey, Chris Howell, Maureen Dunnell, uh, and at a later stage myself. Uh, in in, in our decision to uh, present Christine, uh, we, we considered the following issues. Uh, what, was, what is the value add? Um, it was our assessment that this is a very important position in town, uh, considering that our payroll is currently, this is the combined school and town payroll, 
is currently at 39.7 million. Uh, that is approximately 42.5% of the total expenditures. Uh, and by the way, this does not include benefits. So uh, we have an individual who's qualified to help us um, improve our processes, our information flow with regard to approximately 42.5% of the taxpayers' money. Uh, we also considered uh, Christine's experience uh, working uh, in the accounting field. Um, we believe uh, we have an opportunity to improve our accounting capabilities. Uh, this is very important given the town's uh, focus and priority on budget issues. Uh, thirdly, uh, Christine has also worked as an auditor. Who best can we add to our team other than somebody who can help us comply with state and federal requirements, especially when it comes to payroll? Uh, and finally, uh, Christine has also worked um, within the wider town's finance and accounting context, done some great work uh, in the treasurer collection uh, processes, and in that regard, will strengthen our treasurer collection uh, func functions uh, in the office. Uh, she is uh, working currently towards her certified general accountant certification. Uh, this is through the Mass Municipal Auditors and Accountants Association. Is an accomplished accounting professional with experience um, in municipal government. Uh, she was in fact recognized um, by the, the Department of Revenue Director, Jerry Perry, for the best data submission for her work on Torton's um, FY14 recap. Uh, this is a process that we in town has have identified as an area that we need to improve upon, and so we're glad to have somebody who has expertise and has been acknowledged by the uh, Department of Revenue Services as, as uh, an expert in that area. Um, most importantly, and this also stood out during our interview process, uh, she currently um, um, is the uh, deputy auditor in Taunton, is part of the process of transitioning their financial software package. And that was an attraction to us in two ways. Her experience in transitioning um, at, um, financial software packages, but most importantly, she's also been part of the process of transitioning payroll from being outsourced into an in-house process. Um, her experience, uh, she was, uh, she is currently the acting city auditor for the town of Taunton, or city of Taunton, sorry. Um, she also has worked as a head bookkeeper for the Bellingham Public Schools. You'll recall that the town has spent, I think, the last eight months working on finding ways to better coordinate and administer our payroll process for both town and schools. So somebody who has worked on the, on the school side is a great asset in that regard. Uh, her references were spectacular. Um, we were told that she does understand accounting controls. She's a quick learner, conscientious, and diligent. She's able to form great working relationships even with difficulty or unsatisfactory customers. Uh, she has the ability to solve important matters when difficult situations arise. Uh, she's also very knowledgeable, cooperative, is a hard worker. Uh, and um, to court Dominic Coppola, who was the CPA for Taunton, uh, she, he told us that she has a lot of respect for her. She's an excellent colleague, and his wish was that she become Taunton's next city auditor. Fortunately, she's coming to work for Hopkinton now. Uh, and again, process followed is similar to the process that we have followed in all our hirings, uh, and we are very excited to present Christine to the board tonight. to Would you like to take a, I mean, I think you got a fairly fulsome introduction there, but, uh, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> so thank goodness you already negotiated your contract. Um, but uh, yeah, would you, would you like to introduce yourself briefly to the board and allow us to sure. ask questions? Sure. Um, well, obviously my name is Christina Boyan. Um, 
I have recently, um, well, I'm now obviously coming here, but I had worked for the city of Taunton for the past um, five and a half years. Um, prior to that, I had worked for the town of Bellingham for almost nine years. Um, I left the town of Bellingham just because I relocated to New Bedford, Massachusetts. So I had lived there for five years and wanted to find a job closer to home. Um, and the city of Taunton had hired me to be their assistant city auditor. Um, while I was there, um, the city auditor um, had to go out on medical leave. And um, without question, the mayor appointed me as acting city auditor. I did that for almost six months that I had done that. And in that time, we had done the balance sheet, the recap, and filed Schedule A. And Jerry Perry, um, the director of accounts, had sent an email out. If anybody knows Jerry Perry, he doesn't do that that often. So um, it was nice to be recognized by the DOR. Um, for that accomplishment and you know for him to say that it was the best that he had seen in Taunton quite some time so and I take a lot of pride in that and I take a lot of pride in my work so um, and then after I had interviewed here I you know I really feel like Hopkinton would be a great fit for me so here I am well, wonderful all right well we're very happy you're here thanks starting off Mrs. Sestari comments questions uh, where have you been all our fiscal year <laughs> um, sounds like you do have some great accomplishments um, and congratulations on, on the recognition that you've gotten uh, we welcome you here to town um, I hope you know that we're counting on you and uh, um, no but just good luck thank you very much Ms. Catino. Yeah, I don't want to use that same line, counting on you. <laughs> that was so poor. That was terrible. Um, no, but thank you very much for uh, for choosing us. After listening to the your recommendations and and all, I I, I feel uh, I'm honored that, that you joined us. And thank you because we we um, um, we're a, tr a, a town that's uh, that's growing now. We're in we're at a crossroads and we're, we're transitioning constantly. Mm -hmm. And it would be great to. Um, have somebody that has such a great solid uh, footing. So thank you for coming. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited to see what I can bring here. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mosier. You have some great experience on your resume. Just looking through some of the things, it just, it just all adds up. Um, I noticed you're working <laughs> towards a GCA certification. Uh, I'm glad to see you're doing that. It's been and a fun uh, night. look forward to having you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Hur, any puns left you didn't, that haven't been used? Well, these guys have said it all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always have a couple of sort of uh, questions that bear with me on some of this. Some sure. of not for you. But I go through this process with every hire for whatever reason. They get annoyed, but they'll get over it. Um, <laughs> so this is budgeted? Yes, the position is budgeted. Excellent. And who does the posi where, does, uh, where, will, where, where will Christina, re who, who will she report to? To the finance director. Who reports to the town manager. Great. Okay. Um, that's it. Excellent. Welcome to Hopkinton. Thank you very much. Based on what I see on your resume and what I'm hearing about uh, references and so forth, it's a great fit and we're lucky to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good. Yeah, and, and I say the same thing. Your references are really terrific. Your background's phenomenal. Uh, I think we're all very excited to have you here. So. Thank you. No divided sentiments here. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. On that note, <laughs> right over my head. The chair will entertain a motion to confirm Christina Boyan as the town's new payroll manager. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. What did I do wrong, Mr. Kamala? Okay. Oh. That passed unanimously. Welcome. You're officially confirmed. Thank, Thank you, you for coming much. in tonight. Good luck. So. Good luck, Christina. Okay, next up we have Susan Stewart, uh, who's uh, proposed as the volunteer coordinator at the Center Senior Center. Mr. Kamala, again. Yes, uh, first off, again, let me thank the HR Department, HR Director Maria Casey, Jessica Lawrence, Human Resources Generalist, who actually shepherded the hiring process. Uh, Officer Phil Powers, he participated, uh, as well as uh, Cindy Chesmore. Um, this is, this is an exciting moment for, for me, uh, given the fact that in my prior life, uh, I, I did work with uh, volunteers uh, who were assisting uh, seniors, I, and, and I, I, I therefore understand what you bring to the table and uh, the value that you add to, to the senior center. Um, significant experience, um, 
it's pretty evident uh, from uh, the information I gathered from the interview team as well as your res resume. Uh, 23 years uh, caring ministry volunteer for Woodville Baptist Church. Five years at the senior center as a friendly visitor program. Uh, past five years working at Salmon Health and Retirement Training and supervising volunteers on a variety of responsibilities. Uh, I, I can tell you, um, having worked with Cindy, uh, she's always looking for people who love and care for seniors, but most importantly, people who uh, will assist uh, in enhancing our service delivery. Volunteers play a key role uh, in, 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 in that respect. Um, you also worked for the Framingham Orthopedic Associates. Um, I, I think that's, that's important. I've seen a lot of um, medical related uh, programs that are coming through uh, the senior center. You also helped into a resident. We appreciate your, your service. Uh, you've, you, you confirmed during the interview process your passion for volunteerism. Uh, volunteerism makes our jobs and our lives here in Hopkinton much easier. Um, the references revealed that you absolutely have the qualities to perform as a volunteer coordinator. Uh, you have the strengths um, that confirm your kindness, your patience, compassion, initiative, and you're driven. We were also told you are a very good, active listener. Uh, you are now going to be the go-to person regarding our volunteer activities. Um, we also um, learned from your references that you do things with ease. So we, we, we appreciate that and we're looking forward to, to you joining the Senior Center team. Uh, the pastor at Woodville Baptist Church commented that you love your town, you love your seniors, uh, and clearly this is a win-win position for you as well as the community. I'm honored <laughs> to present Susan to the board <laughs> for appointment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been working on these for a while, sometimes he comes back from vacation. So. <laughs> Susan, welcome. Thank you for coming Thank in tonight. You. Very nice to meet you. Uh, would you care to introduce yourself also to the board? Sure. I'm Susan Stewart, um, and I'm really looking forward to uh, this position. Um, I do have a, a heart for seniors, and um, I'm looking forward to helping the Senior Center bring in volunteers, because as I was there last week, I can see it runs smoothly, and it's, it's, I hope to continue to have it that way. Wonderful. All right, so let's just go to the board. Any questions? Mr. Mosier. Uh, it's just great to see you volunteering. Uh, you've got terrific experience. Um, keep an eye on the pool table, <laughs> especially okay. if they get another one in. Uh, but I can tell you love your work, so congratulations and thank you. Mr. Hur. I think it's a great fit. We're two for two tonight with great hires. I congratulate the hiring teams. Uh, within the town that have worked on both positions. Thank you, Susan, for joining our team. And uh, I just was recently reappointed, Cindy, uh, as well, to be the liaison to the Senior Center on the Council on Aging. So if anything comes up, please give me a call. I know we want to talk about some transportation stuff from the past, that we have more opportunities there um, to help move volunteers and others around. So uh, I think it's a great position. Uh, typical questions that I go to the town manager on, it's budgeted. Reports to the council, uh, Cindy, right? Yes. Okay, all set. Thank you very much. Welcome. It's great. Great to see you here tonight. Mrs. Astari. Budgeted. I thought she was volunteering to be a coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> She's coordinating the volunteers. Coordinating. Oh. <laughs> We're the volunteers. She's coordinating <laughs> us. <laughs> Good luck with board. that job. Um, you know, I mean, just from, from uh, what you've said and what Mr. Kamalo said, I'm not sure whether I should be feeling better for you or for us. Uh, you know, it seems like you're, you're going into something where it's truly a labor of love as well, uh, which I think everybody strives to achieve uh, in their daily life. So, uh, you know, it's great to see someone who's going to bring, bring passion and, and true joy to the job uh, because I think that 
that's that's where success is going to come from uh, in, in a role like this, especially. So congratulations. And Mr. Catino. Yeah, thank you very much for, for coming. Because volunteers are the lifeblood of our town and of and of organizations like the Senior Center. And to have you with with your experience be able to coordinate these volunteers will definitely lead it to uh, to greater even greater things. The um, the senior center said something that's, that's really close to my heart. My mother, that was the first place that she went to and absolutely I, I loved it and adored it for the 12 years she was here in town. And um, it's, it's wonderful that, uh, that you, you're joining that organization. Thank you very much. Okay. And Susan, right, as Alvin said, I'm thrilled you're coming back. Your qualifications are terrific. Um, it's nice to have you back here in town and, and, uh, and making the senior center continue to be a great place to go. So thank you again. Ms. Kamal, any final comments? I just want to thank the HR department for shepherding this process. Maria Casey, Jessica Lawrence, thank you so much. Yeah. And a good night for Maria as well here. Two, two successes. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay, so with that, Chairline, I a motion to confirm Susan Stewart as the volunteer coordinator of the Senior Center. So moved. Second. The motion second for discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimous. Officially, welcome aboard. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Next time on the agenda, 300th anniversary light up the night and parade overview. It's an action item. The board will hear an overview of the light up the night and 300th anniversary parade festivities on the weekend of September 12th and 13th. Um, while we want the projector up, I will say that we are in for a weekend like never seen before in this town. Um, so you should all be so lucky as to live 100 years, except it wouldn't be as good as 400th. Um, we, have, uh, we have a group of volunteers who have been working furiously for for. I don't know, a year now, plus in four years now, actually, right? There we go. Um, uh, putting together a tremendous weekend of events um, that's going to be very exciting, which is capped by a fireworks show, which I think is going to be the main focus of the discussion tonight. So with that, please take it away and tell us about things. Good evening. My name is Megan Meeks Skimming Handrahan, and I have been working on the overall committee for about four years and took a break for about six months and now have been working with Gene and the team on the logistics and planning for the family event, which is called Light Up the Night. And uh, we will also, Paul will be talking about the parade the next day. But I just wanted to give you kind of a big picture overview of, of the planning that has gone on and what we have in store for that particular day. So uh, the event starts at 4 o'clock and will be centered behind the middle school and the high school. and. Uh, we will also be using the Center for the Arts for open house tours. We won't actually have any entertainment there, but the community will have an opportunity. Um, you see that there's some things on here. We're in the process of updating uh, our CAD drawing, so there's a couple of changes to this CAD. Um, so 4 o'clock, the event begins. Uh, we will have a main stage behind the high school in this area. So you see the main stage there. And we will also have a stage, this is called Sparkle Field, and that is a smaller stage, and that field is dedicated towards children's activities and events. So Sparkle Field behind the high school and the main stage and activities uh, behind the middle school. You see E1, E2, E3, those are the main entrances for the event. Um, we will have 16 food trucks and some picnic tables, which you see when you come right in behind middle school there. Uh, we've got lots of porta potties. We have over 25 police. We have 120 volunteers that will be working a variety of shifts. We will be using some of the front parking lots for sponsor, uh, guest, and uh, disabled parking. All the volunteers will be parking back at E. We will also, we have been working very closely with EMC and Faith Church, and we'll be using 17 motor coaches to run shuttles to and from those locations and we'll have volunteers and police support there as well. So after we fill these local lots, some of the streets, the EMC park, we will be directing everyone to Faith Church and to the EMC lots. Uh, we have two stages of entertainment, the main stage, uh, a variety of local groups, some of them young groups, high school groups, uh, recent grads, culminating with um, Steve Spector's hot acoustics that will play for an hour, and we will end the evening with um, the Metro West Orchestra, 
who will play the 1812 over Overture in conjunction um, with the beginning of the fireworks, and then there's a 30-minute fireworks show. Um, we have a couple of unique little features. You see D in the middle of the main field. Um, Ken Wisemantle has kindly agreed to build us a huge birthday cake, so that will be located there. Um, we will also have a project, which is a national project that uh, is a vendor that I've used in, in my past professional experience. I don't know if you're familiar with the photographer who did the photographs at the Boston Marathon finish line um, the year after the bombings, but he does a project uh, called Dear World. And I called and asked if we could replicate that project here, and he agreed. So we will be using the gym in the middle school for a project called Dear Hopkinton, which we will be able to take up to 4,000 photographs of local um, community members where you write on your arm personal messages. We're again working um, with John Copley to then put together a huge photograph with 300 on it with all the individual statements and, and individual community members. Um, we'll have all kinds of activities on the Sparkle Field, inflatables and face painting, balloon artists, all kinds of fun things. Um, and I think that pretty much, oh, the, the decade. We're not going to actually have tents now, but if you see along the fence line that goes down to the field case, we're going to have signage and gathering spots for each of the decades that attended Hopkinton High School, should they want to meet in a particular location, they will have that opportunity. Uh, we've had great support, thank goodness, from Jamie and from all the town departments. So we are working with the schools, the DPW, the fire, the police. We will have emergency vehicles. Um, we, Jamie has agreed to, to work with us in the emergency location. Um, we will also have a volunteer uh, and command center located in the high school cafeteria. Um, and the doghouse is working with us as part of the food availability and lots of entertainment on Sparkle Field, which is more kids' entertainment. I think that's a pretty good overview. We're hoping that the fireworks will start 8.15, 8.20. We are going to have to shuttle folks. We're going to have to come up with a logistics plan and do tickets to get them out because 17 buses will not cover all the people that will potentially be at Faith Church and EMC Park, but in the effort to maximize budget, we're going to give them actual tickets that say what time their shuttle can depart so we don't have everybody at the loop waiting to go at the same time. And Steve Spector has agreed to play for another half an hour just to keep people entertained until they can leave. A lot of the streets will be closed in the Hopkinton area that lead into the school area as of, I think it's Wednesday or Thursday that the no parking signs are going up. Uh, the local communities have donated multiple reader boards, so those will be on all entrances coming into the town, basically uh, describing road closures and timing and some of that logistical information. Excellent. That's a good introduction. And do we want to hear about the parade too, and then we'll, we'll go to the board for questions? Hi. <coughs> I'm Paul Witcher, and we've been, as a committee, working on the parade for three years. And we're going to have a fantastic parade. There you can see the parade route. It starts and <coughs> ends at the high school. We're basically going to take most of the parking in the high school. There will be parking for people who want to watch a parade at Hopkins, but the general area of the high school and middle school will be taken for people in the parade, vans, buses, and so on. We're going to have... Uh, Fire trucks start at 12.15. They'll go off at 12.15, and the parade will start at 1 o'clock. There's going to be 13 bands, 19 marching units, and 21 floats. And those floats, are a lot of them are from people in the community. We actually had to stop taking applications for floats. We were kind of overwhelmed having so many people want to build a float to be in the parade. So I think that's a tribute to the people in the town wanting to do something like that. I have here, if you can't it look at it, I can give it to you so you can take a peek. This just gives you an idea of the bands in the parade, but the highlight ones are the U.S. Navy band, which we're very fortunate to get. 
the Mamas from Philadelphia and uh, the Millville, Blackstone Millville High School Band, which is the Division V state champion and regional champion, as well as the Shriners and uh, a number of other bands. So we will be closing the roads at 12 o'clock. The lists have been set out by Jamie to all of the people in the area so that they know when the roads are going to close. And uh, the only thing we have to ask for is a good day. We're going to have a great day. <laughs> Put in order. Thank you. That's a great, oh, do you have anything? I just want to add one thing. Go, yeah. So I just want to point out that all of this information will be up on the 300th website, which is www.hoppingtonmass300.com. <clears throat> and we also have a Facebook page, which has uh, over 1,000 followers. So all this information in more detail will be posted there shortly. So anything anybody wants to know about what's happening, that's where they should go. Awesome. Okay. okay. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> so we have quite a uh, celebration planned. Uh, Mr. Catino, you want to start with questions? Um, I'm, I'm just inundated with, uh, I'm just glad the Shriners are coming and all that on the Shriner. And, um, now this is, it, it's, it's such a great thing. Um, you know, thank you for putting this all together. They're just all the volunteers that are involved. It's <coughs> years in the planning and, and to think that it's coming together. It, and, and to see this, the, the size of it and to hear how many floats are going are gonna to be there, um, just fantastic. Thank you very much for, for all the coordination and, and making this such a great celebration for the town. Okay. Mr. Mosher. Looks like a lot of work. <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very much for all the effort you put into this. I mean, for a town that handles the marathon, um, this should seem easy, but as the chairman commented, uh, you can't just pull the plan from the 200th celebration uh, and run with it. So, uh, you know, this town is so dynamic, things change almost monthly, it seems. So uh, thank you for your efforts and staying with it through what I'm sure are many logistical headaches. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the celebration. Mrs. Sistari. Well, to the comment on, you know, pulling together the marathon and then looking at this, I mean, the marathon only starts here. This starts here and ends here. Good point. <laughs> and blows up here. So it's bigger. Yeah, that's right. It's bigger. But we but really don't have any idea of the turnout. I think the police are calling it five to 10,000 potentially. Really? I, you know, I mean, this is, this is amazing. Um, you know, I remember, uh, you know, three, four years ago or more that when, when we were starting to think about this and starting to pull people together to lay the foundation for where we are today and, um, you know, it's just one of those things that has happened so quickly and that's coming from, you know, from us and we're not the ones who are there, you know, trying to get it all done on time. <laughs> can only imagine how it is for all the volunteers who have put this in place. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is going to be a, it's going to be a great weekend and, and the whole year has been fantastic so far with the different events that we've had and, uh, you know, different surprises and, you know, things like the time capsule and how well it's worked out. I mean, this is going to be a perfect weather weekend. We're going to have a, it's going to be a great time, great turnout. So, great. Thank you. I just also wanted to mention that the rain date for the fireworks will be on Sunday. However, we won't likely have the food trucks and the entertainment. We will just have fireworks on Sunday. And we still could use a lot of volunteers. We need 120 for the event. And I think, Paul, you have 40 or 50 volunteers for the parade. So if you could go on the website, I think it's the, the Parks it's and on, Rec. It's on the Parks and Rec website. There's a sign-up for volunteers. There's a link to it from the 300th website. Um, I don't know how many have signed up on the site we're, yet. We're getting but, some uh, good sign-up, but we've, we, have, we definitely did short shifts so that people could volunteer for a few hours and then still enjoy for a few hours. So, And we know that there's a lot of kids out there that need to fulfill their junior um, volunteer hours and National Honor Society kids and a lot of great people in the community who would just love to be involved. And, and they get a T-shirt. So, <laughs> You didn't mention that part before. So, the, so the first. <laughs> Mr. Hurry, any questions? Can we go back to the layout for the Saturday event? Uh, the E1, E2, and E3, so those are control points for people to get back into the areas where all the festivities take place. 
how are they going to be set up? Uh, we will have volunteers plus police at each of those locations. We're going to have big balloon columns that designate yep. them as entrances. We have all kinds of uh, volunteers and police that will be in the areas where the public can't be. For example, mm -hmm. beyond that, we will have a, a snow fence behind the football field because the access to the fireworks is dangerous and no one can be there, so we'll have a lot of police and volunteers. Um, you'll be able to use the lots at Hopkins, but any area where we cannot have public access, we will have uh, police as well as volunteers. And to pass through these entry points, is this, is this free or is there a is charge free. to come in? It it's free. free, okay. And there are certain things that the public will be asked not to bring. So that will be listed in on the website as well as the information that we get out in the local papers the weeks prior to the event. Great. And then to the communications effort, uh, is that for both the parade as well as the festivities yes, Saturday? Right. Yeah. Um, I would really push the 30-minute fireworks show yep. because a lot of small-town America, the fireworks last about six minutes. You know, people take an hour to get there. They have a six-minute fireworks, and they go, what the heck was that? And they go home. 30 minutes is a great show. Well, and it's the company that does the fireworks in Boston on the 4th of July. Yeah, so I think we want to really push the, the duration and who's doing it because that's a big, big draw, and that's really exciting. So I think it's going to be a great weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I think there's festivities on Friday night as well with the potential fountain reopening. Yeah, and something. Awesome. awesome. Good. Right. So thank you all. This has been terrific. I mean, you, you're right. To, to say this has been an enormous amount of work is a dramatic understatement. I mean, I, we did a run through last week, and you would you would not believe the logistics involved in this. And it is worth pointing out again that it's also the weekend of Poly Arts. Um, we'll hopefully turn the fountain on. Anybody can look at to look for about we're going to try to get the fountain running again Friday night. There'll be a birthday cake in the common Friday night. There's a ton of things, so it's going to be an enormous weekend. Everyone's going to be very very tired Sunday night. So. Uh, Thank you all for coming in. Um, I don't think there's anything we have to do in this right now, Ms. Kamala. This is just an update. It's my Mr. birthday that week, too. That's Mr. actually why we had the fireworks. Oh, so that's fun. So that was my birthday, too. So. Yeah. Will Mr. Weissman will need a building permit for his cake? <laughs> I, think we should, I think we should make him submit one. I think he's conflicted. Yes. Yeah, he's sort of well, it's <laughs> gonna be in the, he's going to say it's a float. So. We're going we're gonna to call him a common victual and make him come and get a food license yeah, for us. That's right. I think yeah. we should put him through the ringer. <laughs> it's a rum Thank you all for coming in, Megan, Paul. Thank you. It's a rum cake. Great. You'll need a liquor license. <laughs> that's right. You'll need every license of that. <laughs> From one highlight to the next, and this seems positively small by comparison, the Boston Athletic Association field size, an action item. Tonight, the Board of Selectmen will hear from Associate BAA Executive Director Thomas S. Grilk, who will request the Board approve a preliminary field size for the 2016 Boston Marathon. Mr. Grilk, welcome, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Board, good evening. It is, as ever, a privilege and a pleasure to be here. And I come here, yes, to speak of the 2016 Boston Marathon. If I may, I'll make an introduction first. Uh, some of you may have met. We have a gentleman with us now, Doug Flannery, who stands with me, who is now our senior operations manager within the BAA. He joins us after a 31-year distinguished career with the United States Navy, uh, having retired uh, this past year. I have acquainted him that he is not the only <laughs> such person in the room. Approved. Uh, That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Retired as a commander this past year, and uh, his, his, uh, one's esteem for his judgment continues to accelerate as he is a resident now of the town of Hopkinton. Uh, so he is a, uh, a local resident here. Uh, so you'll, uh, it, it will be good for all. I think you may see more of Doug than of me in some of these things, uh, since he will be at the center of our operations work, working with Dave McGilvery and the people from DMSE who uh, do so much of the work, the logistics work and organization work for the marathon and for our other uh, events. I I'm here, we are here this evening uh, in furtherance of a letter sent to the board on July 17 uh, concerning next year's marathon. Uh, and we are here to seek initial, and it is that initial approval for a field size once again <clears throat> of 30,000 runners, the same field size uh, that we had last year. Uh, we will begin registration for next year's marathon 
uh, in mid-September, uh, and in the spirit of collaboration with which we have always worked, we didn't want to do anything like that without first talking with you folks and getting at least uh, an initial sense that, that it is all right with you to proceed that way. Naturally, uh, formal approval will follow uh, a review by the board of our request for a parade permit, which we will file immediately. Uh, there have been discussions among our people, Dave McGilvery and others, with uh, town officials here, uh, including uh, the police department, Chief Lee is here this evening, the fire department is represented here this evening. Um, uh, and so far we are all in accord that uh, if, we are, if we were to do virtually the same thing as was done last year, the same field size, uh, the same four waves, the same schedule, uh, with the same level of support for town public safety officials from state and other public safety officials, uh, then that would be a sensible way to proceed. But, First, we wanted to speak to you about it and obtain at least an initial uh, approval from you to proceed in this direction. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Nice to, very nice to meet you. Um, so the ask is for 30,000 app runners this year. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, let me also just, since you're here, I'll, I'm going to do this with you here tonight. Um, every year although it's not linked at all with the decision. The BAA generously grants a set of waivers to the community. Um, last year you gave us 50 that we use for charitable purposes in the community. And what we do as a board is we distribute them to, um, to uh, charitable organizations all apply. We have a little lottery to make, try to make it into something fun. And then we distribute those out and then those folks uh, actually get people to run for them and to raise money, which primarily stays within the community, ideally. So I, I'd like you to know, tonight um, we got the final tally, and the 50 waivers last year, which went to all, all sorts of causes in town, raised a total of $251,238.15. So you. I, um, I must thank you uh, again for your generosity. As you know, we started doing this in earnest about five, four or five years ago now. The first year we raised $87,000, so we've gotten much better at it over time. So um, uh, this has been a, another great benefit to the community, um, and I want to take the opportunity to thank you uh, for your continued generosity. In, uh, well, well, we are pleased these. to do it, and we, we are very much of the mind that this is a collaboration, and so with all of the support that is received from the town for this, the town should have some opportunity to decide who will be at the starting line. So you, you may certainly be assured that that same opportunity will be available uh, this year. Right. Thank Maybe you so the much. total will continue to rise. All right. So with that, let me go to the board for questions, and since he actually runs the thing, let me go to Mr. Hurd to start. <laughs> so. Can we talk about the waves for a minute? Yes. And the spacing of the waves? It seems like they're further and further apart each year, and it seems to um, sort of take some of the energy out of the start after that first wave goes. And being one of the fourth wave types, right, <laughs> um, it, 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 there's not the same sense going off in the fourth wave as there is in that elite wave. So are you negotiating for an earlier wave start? Or are you no, 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 I don't want to get, I'll get trampled. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I just, that, that why do we have to spread it out so much? Why can't we condense it a little bit? The, the principal reason has been that it is it is difficult, to say the least, to have the entire field out here in Hopkinton. Uh, and the arrangement that had been reached with the town and public safety officials from the town and elsewhere was that at no time would more than half the field be at the athlete's village. So as the first two waves are moving out, the second two waves are coming into town. So the extra, I think, five minutes between waves was inserted in order to allow that process <clears throat> to work effectively and to avoid too much crowding and perhaps some degree of public safety risk from, from arising. Uh, we are quite willing to, to work with the town uh, on, on any of, of those issues. Okay. So is it possible that we have some more dialogue about that? And I'd be happy to go as the board member if I could, um, because I hear a lot about that. As a runner and as a participant of many, 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 many years and uh, with a lot of people out in town talking about different things, um, I think if we could try and at least talk about it so maybe we can better educate everybody as to why we have the waves and why there's a little bit of time in between there, uh, I think that might help. 
That would be a fine conversation to have, and we would welcome it. Separate question, if I could. Um, I'll ask it in a generic manner, uh, so as not to incriminate See, anybody. There was a runner that wanted. To um, who tracks the streakers within the organization of the BAA? Well, the, uh, we do it rather informally, uh, largely because there have been the, the, the number has been negligible. Uh, there, uh, when somebody counted a year ago, I don't know if I've heard a number this year. Thirty-eight. I don't know if you did. Yeah. So, and, and a year so, ago, we, we counted about twelve feet six people. Would that uh, be under the command? I'm sorry, Commander. I missed your first name there. Uh, Doug, would that be under Doug's responsibility going forward? Well, it certainly rests within the, the, the BAA, uh, yes. Yeah. If and, I knew somebody that wanted to talk about that, who would they reach out to? Oh, uh, Commander Flannery, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> I'll set this <Mr>. chair. <laughs> He's our logistics operations officer. Got it. Clothing uh, officer. Mr. Uh, Sestari. How are you doing, Tom? Very well, thank you. It's always good to have you back here. Um, I have uh, no concerns whatsoever with keeping the field at 30,000. Last year, I know that we were very, well, over the past several years, we've had lots of conversations with you, and uh, obviously it was with great caution that, that uh, you know, we moved to up the field size. I thought things went extremely smoothly last year, um, and uh, looking forward to the next marathon. So. Well, thank you. Mr. Mosher. I nice see you back, Tom. Um, I really don't have much to say. I mean, it's gone off very well the last few years and more continued success. Well, thank you. Mr. Mosher and I spent many, many hours together leading up to the marathon in 2014 after what happened in 2013. And somehow the number of streakers never came up. <laughs> so, so, certainly you never raced it, yeah. No. yeah. yeah. I'm guilty. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Gattino. Yeah, I, I'm just always amazed at how smoothly everything goes. And it's just clockwork, it's precision, and um, yeah, I think that the 30,000 number is is great. I, it worked out well last year, and it was even you know, first time in a while it was bad weather. And here we were worried about the snow and everything else, and it all melted the week before and everything else. So that all worked out great. And, and really, thank you very much for the. Um, for the uh, the entries because it really means a means a lot to the town and 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 the and the organizations uh, around the community. Um, and I don't know if this is the time to ask, but you know, we could always use more. You never if this, if you ever can, if you can you know you don't get anything if you don't ask, and maybe it's not <laughs> you anything. Find them in your couch cushion. Exactly. You know. If this you know that life does work always, that way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But you know just, uh, if you can't get anything without asking. And You're planning on running. Possible. Huh? No, no, for the back to the community. So we, can, you know, it's it's something we've gotten good at at raising money to do things, and it always can help if it's, if it's at all possible. But thank you very much for for all you do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So it sounds like the board is uh, is pretty happy with things as they've run. I don't sense any issues with the thirty thousand number. So uh, Chairman, entertain a motion for the, that the board selectmen. I want to be clear, by the way, before I do that, this is not the issuance of the final permit. You know this full well, but just so everybody that, that knows. That is correct. In fact, this, we, is not, this is not, this is by no means absolutely settled. This is just a preliminary number. So the board, uh, Chair Lantana motion the board approve a preliminary field size for the 2016 Boston Marathon of 30,000 runners. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimously approved. Hopefully Mr. Kamal doesn't have a spoiler now. Sir. No, I won't. I, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Tom and his team for continuing to grow the footprint of the marathon in the town, uh, growing it as an, as an asset in the community, uh, but most importantly, uh, broadening the spirit mm -hmm. of the marathon. Uh, we appreciate that. And also to take this opportunity to welcome Commander Flannery <laughs> um, to the team, uh, and also thank you for your service to the nation. Well, it, it remains for us a privilege to work with all of you, and as I have said here before, when I come to these meetings, it just kind of feels like we're going home and <laughs> talking to, to, to the hometown crew, and, and it, uh, as much as anything, it, it leaves us with a very powerful sense of obligation to all of you and the people here to, to live up to the responsibilities that you give us and the standards to which you hold yourselves. We'll do our best.
you know, if he'd been an aviator, I'd have gone for 40000 But that's beside the point. So, thank you. <laughs> all <laughs> thank right. you all, thank you all for coming in tonight. We have permit message. requests. We'll file <laughs> this evening. <All> right. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Next time on the agenda, text sandbox update discussion. Uh, this will be a good one uh, for folks who aren't as familiar with tech sandbox. The board will hear a brief update on the accomplishments at one of Hopkins' newest businesses, not even in, anymore. Uh, I think I would say well-established businesses, tech sandbox, and their upcoming endeavors. Barbara, welcome. Can you introduce yourself? Thank you guys for uh, inviting me and everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity. We also feel part of the, uh, the community. So um, we started tech sandbox. Almost two years ago, actually, we moved in right after Labor Day weekend two years ago. So while to you it feels established, to me it still feels like a startup, but there you go. So um, as you know, we have 8,500 square feet right over on uh, South Street, and uh, one of the pieces of news I'll share with you is we're actually looking for 2,500 square feet more and fundraising to put in a maker space, space which I'll explain in just a second. Um, one of the things I wanted to take a, a second just to remind you all of is that we are a not-for-profit. We did this for a number of reasons that I won't go into right now, um, but there are a lot of ties that bind, including things like Eagle Scouts and things like that. Um, but one of the things I wanted to mention is there are over 3,500 incubators across the United States. The grand majority of those are out of universities or they're out of actual cities. Uh, where there tends to be a larger population, maybe some universities in them. Most of the incubators have support from the cities or from the universities in terms of real estate being paid for, uh, positions being funded and all of that. We are doing something very different by doing something like Tech Sandbox in a region based in Hopkinton, um, which doesn't fit any of those descriptions. And so as such, uh, funding is actually one of our uh, biggest concerns in making this go forward. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we've accomplished, just to give you an update, because I think you'll find it kind of interesting. Um, just a quickie for any of you who don't know Tech Sandbox. Uh, so again, 8,500 square feet on South Street. And our mission is to accelerate the success of science and technology entrepreneurs and their businesses. And uh, we've done that uh, successfully for over 20 companies so far. A few have fast failed, which is fine, because then their bank accounts at home aren't as ri at, at risk. Um, but a number of them have actually got Gotten, uh, funding. So we've taken the best practices of what's happening in Boston and made a little microcosm here out in Metro West, right here in Hopkinton. And that's co-working space, mentors, advisors. We run four to eight programs consistently every single month in different sectors. Some of you have come to some of our programming. And we're bringing in 100, 125 people a month through our doors to those programs in addition to the I believe we're up to 24 resident entrepreneurs that are in Tech Sandbox at this point in time. Again, a few have left the building, but there you go. So we are attracting new people to um, understand what Hockington has to offer. In our grander mission, any of you who read, um, I think it was Metro West Daily News about a year and a half ago where you know, it was Silicon Valley East, that really is my personal mission. Um, I moved to, the, to this area from downtown Boston in the 80s to join the mini computer revolution and then there was the telecom revolution and this was the place to be even for you know a 22 year old. Um, and now as you know there's, there's a brain drain, everybody's, even from uh, who live in areas like this tend to commute into Boston to work and I see that as, as the kind of wrong wave if you will. So what do we need to do as a town to actually even make this area be uh, recognized for um, being more innovative? And it has to start with a bunch of us coming together and doing things of this nature. Tech Sandbox isn't the end all and be all, by the way. Um, so we have all these resources in one location with our 24-7 access for these entrepreneurs, although most of them are not there at midnight like they might be in Boston, um, and provide them with all of these resources in one place. We also have this mini maker space right now where we've gotten equipment donated from um, analog devices, MathWorks, um, Microsoft, I'm trying to think of who else, several others are actually signing a contract with SolidWorks right now. So this is tens of thousands of dollars worth of licenses and equipment in this maker space so that we can support software companies as well as companies doing hardware, clean tech, robotics, energy, um, life sciences, medical devices in our space. And what we need is a bigger one of those to attract even um, more businesses that want to actually come and, and what they have to do is develop prototypes very often in order to get funding. Uh, the uh, investors are conservative in this part of the world and they want to see kind of at least an inkling of a product working, so that's kind of what we're there to help them with. 
Um, we've attracted over 50 volunteers. Uh, some of them are from Hopkinton. It is a very volunteer-oriented community. I'm going to give you some more stats on that in a minute. Um, and dozens of other sponsors from within Hopkinton and without. So again, we've helped over 20 companies um, actually either find um, mentors, find advisors, find investors, find partners, um, you know, someplace along their journey. Some of them you'll start seeing in the news pretty soon. And uh, hopefully they're going to, you know, grow in, in um, their businesses within Hockington directly. We've also been what's called a virtual incubator to a number of companies, too. Those are ones that, for whatever reason, choose to not reside, you know, keep their company locations within Tech Sandbox, but they come in for that advising and mentoring and office hours. So there are dozens of those as well. Um, so some of the things you might want to know. Hockington, uh, we're getting a lot of recognition for Hockington. I hope you guys uh, read some of the local press. We've been in the Boston Globe, Boston Globe West, Economy, Metro West uh, Daily News, Worcester Business Journal, et cetera, et cetera. I brought you some. You can have my pictures if you'd like them. <laughs> and some of the press that we've gotten. And all of them, of course, say that we're in Hockington. So hopefully that's helping with some of the positive recognition. Um, we're getting revenue pull, f uh, you know, for the town. I know there's a special term for that, but if you think about the fact that we probably order a couple hundred dollars worth of pizza from Bills every single week, there's, you know, there's an example, and they deliver. Nancy Flaherty, one of our volunteers that lives in town, talked them into delivering for us. Yay! <laughs> it's one of the things we don't have enough of in Hockington. So uh, we use them all the time um, and, you know, get, uh, give them revenue as, as well. Price chopper, places like that. So hopefully some of that, uh, we're keeping track of things. We try to tag everything with Hockington if um, it was purchased in Hockington for the business, but people also buy things directly. Again, hope, hoping that we're a magnet for other businesses. Um, and so, you know, some of the things that we do, I know I ran this really quickly, so I apologize, because Hockington's spelled wrong in one place. But from our database, I actually, um, I'll give these to I actually went into our database and just pulled some quick stats because I knew that this was probably true and it's nice to say that my uh, understanding of our database was true. We actually looked at all the people in our database, and it's pretty substantial, um, and did a, um, a pie chart of what towns people either say they live or work in. We don't always know whether it's live or work. And um, you'll see the percentages with 11% coming from Worcester, which is kind of interesting, 10% from Hockington, so that's number two. Um, Westboro was 10%, but it was just short of that, so that was the third one, then Marlboro, and you can read this around. But just to kind of show you some of the impact and who we're serving uh, within the town, we're definitely serving the immediate area, which is Hopkinton, you know, Southboro, Westboro, as you would expect, Marlboro. Then at the bottom, I actually, um, again, we have um, the resident entrepreneurs, as we call them, the ones that call Tech Sandbox home, and six of the resident companies, or six people from the resident companies call Hopkinton home. So just some, some real numbers to kind of show you the impact on the people within the town, uh, as well as some of the financial impact, and hopefully in the grander scheme of things, our, our part in making uh, Metro West um, greater than it once was, because when I was out here, there really weren't even any movie theaters or restaurants right back in the 80s. We've come so much further. So I'm hoping that um, you know, we'll be a magnet and have people attracted oops, um, to the region for other reasons uh, besides the wonderful quality of life that towns like Hopkinton bring. So um, I was asked uh, to come and, and uh, also mention what maybe people in Hockington could do for our town. Yes? What? Not you, the HCAM person. Oh, or, sorry. Our monitor went out. <laughs> okay. That's been blank a whole lot, and it's been flashing on and off the whole night. So um, what, can, what can Hockington continue to do for us? I think the biggest thing for us is, again, uh, fundraising. We need some of the large entities, some of the large corporations within Metro West, some of which are in Hockington, um, to actually step forward and become sponsors for Tech Sandbox. Sponsorship for businesses is typically an exchange of goodwill and some form of marketing for them to have an affiliation with the organization they're sponsoring. A lot of the companies in this area are sponsoring organizations that are similar to Tech Sandbox, but they're inside 128. I need your help getting them to help us, you know, create this, this center of innovation here. So introductions to any decision makers in the large players in the region is one of the things you can do. 
Um, we also, um, I was uh, told that this would be a good place to ask this. So Nancy Flaherty is uh, one of our volunteers. She's a retired Hockington resident, and she comes in two days a week, at least half a day, if not full days for me to help with registration and database work and keeping me sane and all of that, because it really is just me. We could use another few volunteers, um, and so some introductions maybe to uh, some people that have children in uh, young grades at school that have some time during the day that could um, help me, and, and I'm, I'll give them very quality work. So the bridging the resume problem for some people who decide to do the parent track is always a tough challenge. I have real work for people. I have marketing work. I have accounting work. I have you know, just about anything from a business perspective, as well as helping answer doors and things like that. So if any of you can connect, I, don't, I didn't want to kind of lurk outside of daycare and say, hi, do you need any volunteer? <laughs> so, but um, any of you that might know connections, that would be great. Um, and the third thing is really an easy one that I ask of everybody in the room, please tell people about us. The best thing you can do is when you go home tonight, and I'm telling you, take two minutes. It's called a five-minute favor, but only take two, which is to go email a couple of people that you know that are in the tech sector and let them know about what we do. Our four to eight programs a month are in support of tech entrepreneurs, but they also are a way of gathering stakeholders within the community of STEM professionals together for topics that might be of interest to them. This is where we're trying to mix up um, you know, the stakeholders from various company sizes and service providers so that they come to the room and they interact. So telling somebody that might be interested in some of our topics and what we do would really help us a lot. You know, we, we estimate that there are 25,000 people in Metro West that need to know about us, that need us, and we haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg in getting the word out to them. So respectfully, that's um, my information to you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. And sorry I have to do the glasses thing. I scratched my cornea, so I am kind of can't wear my contacts. <laughs> and now I can actually see your faces. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was wonderful and very high speed. So let's go over to Mr. Sestari to start. Um, no, I've been, to, I've been to some of the sessions that they've had down at Tech Sandbox. I'm a member down there. I enjoy going down there for the sessions when I can. Uh, I think Come it's more often. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, you know, it's not always easy, but uh, no, it's. A, I think it's a great benefit to people, whether they're trying to get a startup off the ground, whether they're trying to network, anything of that nature. And then, uh, obviously, uh, the volunteers there who are some of the more seasoned professionals. Um, it's uh, it, you know, it's great to see them there. You know, giving back, to, giving back to that particular community, as well. So, okay, Mr. Mosher. Um, yeah, that was high speed. Uh, <clears throat> um, if you're if you're looking to to get people involved volunteer wise and and get the word out and things like that, uh, just just add this little side thought. A lot of the books that I've read on very successful people, they had unusual opportunities that coincide with their skill set. And you might want to talk to the school committee at some point and see if maybe there's some synergy with with students in, in Hopkinton, and that, that would open up a whole new um, reservoir of potential volunteers and things like that. I don't, maybe you've already done that, just, just a thought. But I think it's a great resource to have here, so thank you. We actually have a college intern that's a Hopkinton resident and a high school in, intern that's a Hopkinton resident this summer. So yeah, always can use more, but thank you. Okay. I want to keep going, but I just I have to open a public hearing because yeah. that was scheduled for a 15. So we have a posted public hearing, a joint poll hearing, and action item. The board will consider a joint petition from Verizon New England Incorporated to place new polls at the following location on Hayden Row. On the northeasterly side, relocate JO poll number T100 slash E100 approximately 220 feet northwesterly from the center line of Grand Street. Um, so can I get a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Let's look on you. Okay, opposed. Okay, that's unanimous. Uh, I'm going to continue the public hearing, so we're going to come back to you right now. So we're going to keep it all. I, I just need to open it. We're going to set it aside for a minute, and then we're going to come back to you now. I, that was just administrative detail. Thank you. Were you done? Um, I was. John? Done to Mr. Over to you, Mr. Hart. I think it's a great resource for this community. I've been there a couple of times. I was there. I went into the text sandbox in Southboro uh, on Route 9. And uh, it's grown substantially from there to here, uh, which is great to see. But there's a lot more capacity there. I think there's a lot more bandwidth there to use the tech term. Um, microphone. Sorry. Microphone. Uh, so all good stuff. Uh, we had the senior center folks in here, 
here earlier this evening and we just hired a new volunteer coordinator for the Senior Center. Yes. I'm sure there's some seniors that have been in business that are interested in technology or new startups or new ideas that would be interested in maybe lending a hand over there. So I think it would be appropriate to reach out to them to see if they want to spend some time uh, doing some work at Tech Sandbox. That would be wonderful. I think the school committee idea is a great idea. And there's a lot of, you know, there's more and more small startup tech type firms in Hopkinton beyond Tech Sandbox uh, that we also should try to tap into somehow. But I think to try and create a, a, an economy, a local economy, a regional economy based on new technology is absolutely the way to go for the future. Not only for the residents, you know, the people that work at these places, but for the community. Our tax base would be greatly improved if we could continue to fuel this type of growth in the area. So. Uh, I think we should try and do whatever we can as a board and as a town uh, to make it happen. But I'd reach out to the Senior Center for sure. There's some great that's, people Nancy over there. Nancy does volunteer work there too, so that's great. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Over to Ms. Katina. Yeah, I think we're very lucky to have you here in Hopkinton. And I'm not just speaking because I'm an inventor. Well, actually, John's also an inventor. And, you know, we, we've started small companies, and I've been up there. I should have used you guys much more. And I plan to in the future. But thank you very much for all you're doing. And, and, and you know, if we can get this going a lot faster, like you said, like uh, Brian you. Hurst said, we can make a lot out of it. And we're getting some um, nudging from the state. We've actually had um, Under Secretary Stebbins come in, and she's looking for us to actually uh, create a new initiative to try to tie. Um, veteran tech entrepreneurs into Tech Sandbox, and I think that that would be wonderful, and I know that that resonated uh, with you guys. So um, some help in that arena as well. We're being connected into the Natick Army Labs and all of that, but to actually have a special focus so we can pull um, veterans who want to create tech businesses uh, in and help them to be successful too. So connections, it's all about connections. Thank you very much for the invitation. I just got a couple questions before I go. How are you funded? I mean, how, where does all the money come from? <laughs> yeah. So the first few years were mostly from um, me and Harold Nahigian, who's the, um, the, you know, the real estate property owner who's uh, basically given us a pass on almost all of the costs for two years. That is coming to an end, you know, in, in the not too distant future. And um, I'm not independently wealthy, so at some point in time I need to be able to pay my own food bills and all of that, which is one of the reasons why we really need to crack the nut on the larger corporations. So we get a lot of small donations from service providers, uh, law firms and accounting firms and all of that, and it's kept us afloat. And then increasing the number of resident entrepreneurs we have kind of keeps some of the variable costs in check, but really to be able to do the things we need. Uh, we need to scale faster. So when folks come in, do they pay something, but yeah. it's dramatically less than, I guess, it's $200 a month. Yeah. That okay. includes coffee, A bargain at any price. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's really meant to be just a, you don't get it for free factor, right? <laughs> well, I think what you heard clearly is the board wants you to succeed. And so maybe as a follow-up, what we should do is try to find some time. We can sit down with you, maybe with Mr. Kamalo, and just sort of talk through some ideas about folks to approach, where places you've been and you want to go, get some ideas from the board members. And... Um, and help you and help you try to and I try know to several large company execs live right in Hawkington. I can name mm. some of them. <laughs> right. Well, maybe we should look for pathways to see if we can help you um, make some of those connections, give some introductions. All right. Thank you for coming in. This was Thank great. you guys for inviting me and Brian for uh, instigating this connection. Thanks very much. I'm really happy to be here. So nice to see you again. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, so we'll return now to item 10, the post public hearing joint poll hearing. Um, an action item from Verizon. Do we have a Verizon representative? Sir, can I ask you to come to the podium and introduce yourself? Hey, thank you. Thank you. My name is Thomas Blickars, B as in boy, L-I-C-H-A-R-Z. I work for UC Synergetic. Uh, we are consultants for Verizon, and we provide rights of way in engineering services to them. So I'm here on behalf of Verizon to petition for a uh, new location for poll number 100. Um, the reason we need to move it is uh, because of the new development, Davenport Village. Um, I'm sure you've seen the driveway being pushed in and the new stone walls. So this poll would currently sit right in the middle of the entrance, so uh, the utility companies just need to move the pole out of the way. So we'll move it 21 feet to the north and uh, transfer our equipment and cable to the new pole, take out the old pole, so no, no net new poles will be added. Okay. 
Uh, going for questions, Mr. Mosier. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Zistari. No questions. Mr. Hart. Can we ask a related question or do we have to close the public hearing first? We should do the hearing on this topic first. No questions on this topic. Okay, I'll come back to that. I won't forget. And then Mr. Catino. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chairman, I do have one Go. One question for the town manager. Do we have any pending business with Verizon? Should we do that outside the public yeah. hearing context on this yeah. poll specifically? Back to my question. Okay. Yeah. So I'll come to you as well on that right. topic. Very good. Okay. So we have no questions on, from the board on this poll. Do we have any questions from the public, abutters, any interested parties uh, at all? Okay, hearing no takers. Uh, Chair, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second motion, we have a second for the discussion on that topic. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye opposed, present not voting, that's unanimous. The public hearing is now closed. So now the board uh, can deliberate um, and I think also this would be the appropriate time to ask questions outside the context of the public hearing. So, Mr. Kamal, was there something you wanted to say first? Yes, I can mention that uh, at, at the present moment, we have a great relationship with uh, Verizon. Uh, Ellen Cummings is our, our contact, and she's been very responsive when we've had questions, uh, including when we needed Verizon to submit the requirements for this application. Uh, in terms of pending business, we are scheduling uh, our first negotiations with uh, Verizon on the license renewal process. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hur, you had a question outside the public hearing. So outside the public hearing and away from this topic, but if I could to a representative that sounds like he works quite a bit with Verizon, it's my understanding that throughout the center of the community here, Verizon owns the polls? Or do we own the polls now? No. the. Uh the polls are jointly owned with the Eversource and Verizon. It just so happens in the town of Hopkinton, Verizon sets the polls. The next town over, Eversource will set the okay. polls. So They're Verizon, jointly owned 50-50. So and, and then Verizon is a 50% partner in managing what's on the polls. Is yes, that sir. a fair statement? Mm -hmm. So in my travels to other communities throughout the Commonwealth, I rarely see in all these communities I've been to, I rarely see the spaghetti I see here in the center of Hopkinton. There's a lot of clusters across Massachusetts where they'll put a cluster across the top of the pole, eight cables or 10 cables or something like that. And I know there's low voltage and high voltage and EMF and all that, I get it. But there's a much better way to do it than what we have out here. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've been talking about putting the things under the ground because we're sick of looking at them. We've been talking about a lot of things. I don't think we've ever really explored cleaning up what we have. Mm -hmm. How would we get that done? Well, um, the way to do it is to go underground. And so there'll be a way that Verizon could probably consolidate some of the copper cables it has up there because we don't have as many customers running through the copper cables anymore. It's all in Fios. Uh, or our competitors have taken customers. So, uh, you know, we could probably make the cable smaller, but the idea would be to place everything underground. And that's if we can't go underground digging. because of the cost, if we can't go underground, if, can if we, we clean up what we have? Um, I mean, sure, any, anything is possible. Uh, like I said, if there are three or four copper cables, could be all consolidated into a single cable, maybe two. So, yes, there would, there would be a way to consolidate and make uh, many cables, fewer cables, make larger cables, smaller cables, sure. So, so not to put you on the spot, Mr. Chair, or sorry, not to put you on the spot, but, but you've seen outside here. Have you seen outside here the spaghetti oh, sure. we have in Hopkins? Oh, yes. Do you yeah. see the spaghetti? Is it me or is it you see the no. spaghetti, right? Okay. I've seen that. But so it's not an unreasonable to, expectation. There are a lot of towns, downtown areas with, you know, tons of aerial plants. It's just, you know, we just. They don't go like this. You know, we just go like this around here. <laughs> yeah. They're a little bit more lined up. What do they do? Act. <laughs> Go like this. <laughs> You're getting too technical. I can't follow this. Yeah, it's true. It's true. There are communities where the stuff has been put underground right from day one, and it was a good idea to do so. But in Hopkinton, uh, you know, there is some conduit in Hopkinton, but it's more for the express cables that ride through town. But the local stuff is on the poles. So. Mm. Yeah, it's possible, and uh, you know, you'd have to get a request in to someone in Verizon, probably someone in the uh, oh, public services, uh, you know, uh, public relations department. I could get you a name, and you could submit a letter 
asking uh, for uh, you know a college try to to get the uh, stuff consolidated. Last question, Mr. Chair. I promise sure. to the chair or to the town manager. We've never really talked about cleaning up what we have, though, have we? We have. We have. After you made the suggestion, yes. I don't recall having the conversation after the suggestion. Um, you made the suggestion, and when we had the site walkthrough for the undergrounding of utilities discussion, I did raise that issue. And what was said? It's a long process. Well, our, our focus at this point is if we can get everybody to agree on undergrounding. I think that's where our energy goes. As an alternative, yes, then that could be a fallback plan. However, right now we want to focus on undergrounding. The problem is even if you go clean up, you still get the poles in the middle of the sidewalks. Right? <laughs> so you still get poles, poles, so. poles don't look bad when the wires that are on them aren't crazy. Well, Seriously. I mean, there's a lot of nice out. downtowns in small town Massachusetts that have poles that look a thousand times better than what we look at. I would put that in a letter to someone from public relations. I get you the name, and uh, make a case, make a make a proposition. If Verizon take a good look at it, I live here in Hoppington, and uh, I ride underneath that stuff every day uh, by the drugstore. I used to work with. I probably engineered some of those cables back in the 70s and 80s. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been around for a while. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Moser, you had a question on so. Uh, the town manager clarified his relationship with Verizon, so I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, anybody else? No. Yeah, go. Um, I have a question for Mr. Kamalo. Um, have we made any progress at reducing the number of double poles in town? Yeah, we continue to work with Verizon on that issue. Uh, we, 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 we have had a target. Uh, that, that so far, I think, uh, we're, we're pretty much meeting. Um, so you're, you're satisfied with the progress that yes. we're making on yes, that, the speed of the progress? Speed, there's so much that we can do. Uh, I would like the process to be much quicker. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the direction of the effort, yes, I'm satisfied. And when they submit a request for a public hearing like this, uh, how long does it take us to get it on the agenda? <laughs> One meeting, two meetings, six months? We were, we were pretty efficient in this case, Jamie. First contact from your office, I'm trying to remember when you called me, um, a couple weeks ago. So we were, we were pretty efficient when we did this. So Great. We expect the same response from yeah, Verizon. Yeah, I'd love for that message to get through to Verizon. Um, final question for me, at least. Do um, the, the DPW director mentioned another pole they need to get moved over off of East Main Street? Are we working on that? What's that again, sir? The DPW director in his comments mentioned a pole P9 or something that has to get moved off Franklin Road. Uh, Do you know, know anything about, about that, that one? Nope. Don't know anything about that. Different project. This is um, the reference by John is to the Legacy Farms. Exactly. No, I know. That's my point. My point is, is that one making its way ahead as we need it to? We're working with Ellen. Are we getting the response we need is what I just want to understand. The coordination was, we're expecting better coordination between the different entities concerned. Okay. Is there anything you can do to help us with that, with this poll P9? This is poll 9 and Franklin. Franklin, yeah, Frank, Frankland Road, yeah. Frankland, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, when I go Paul back... Is Paul get moved to get this, to get this road moving, good construction underway? And he's, so he's trying hard to get that moved quickly. Okay. Um, I can follow up tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I have off. I can follow up on Thursday. Uh, should I call someone here? Could I, should I call the town manager? Or? Sure, yeah, however you handle it. I, I, we'd just be, we'd be thankful if you could okay. try to see if we can move that one forward. Be glad to. Okay. And the double For pull on West Elm. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then finally, the thing I want to make is, for the record, we got a letter, an email today from Verizon with two with details of two return letters that were sent to Butters. So I just want to make sure we're all aware of that. So they did try to uh, reach out to everybody. I got an email this afternoon with a couple of letters that weren't deliverable. So I just want to make sure that, that's for the record, that's noted. Okay. With that, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll move that we approve the poll movement. 
Uh, I move the board approve the joint pole request by Verizon to place poles, wires, cables, and fixtures along Hayden Road Street, approximately 200 feet from Grand Street, as described in the petition. Second. Okay, we have a motion second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> President not voting. That's unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a great evening. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Item 11 on the agenda, Fire Chief Hiring Process Update, Action Item uh, Discussion. The board will receive an update on the progress of the fire chief hiring process. Mr. Kamalo, how are you doing? Um, three key talking points. Did you see this uh, time? I got that. Just come in. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. This is the representative of the public meeting. Uh, we will be joining the hiring uh, committee. Uh, we will report that the board um, appointed Mr. Moja to be his representative. Uh, we've also uh, been working on identifying uh, a local fire chief to participate in the process. Um, we have not nailed down a name yet. Um, our challenge here is to balance uh, the individual's knowledge of the region uh, with um, any perceptions uh, regarding their partiality or impartiality. Um, secondly, we also I have put together a schedule that I shared with the board tonight, uh, thanks to the efforts of the HR department. And that schedule basically identifies the recruitment and selection process, uh, sourcing the candidates, it's the selection and evaluation hiring, uh, the, select, the, the, the board of selectmen's involvement uh, in the interview process, and stretches from uh, where we are now to perhaps the first week in January where we may be able to make an appointment. Okay. Mr. Moser, since you're the representative, do you want to um, start with any comments? Uh, <clears throat> no, actually, this, this looks pretty good. There's uh, looks like about half a dozen or more meetings of the full committee. Uh, yeah, I guess I will make a And So, Mr. Kamal, I'm assuming that you're going to take uh, what we learned from the police chief's playbook and you're applying that. Yes, in process. It, yes, we will. And in fact, in our discussions with uh, Mr. Levinson, uh, he, he did suggest that we have a quick uh, lunch or coffee with uh, the members uh, of the police chief hiring process to talk about lessons learned. Mm -hmm. and, and that takeaway will be applied in this process, or is reflected in this? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm good. Okay, Mr. Har. I have no questions at this time. Mr. Zastari. Um, I just see that uh, this is basically assuming that there's going to be a start date right at the beginning of January. Um, is that going to overlap with the Chief's planned retirement date at well, all? We're hoping to get some form of overlap. Uh, however, at this point, the Chief is yet to um, finalize his retirement date. date. Okay. But the date was in January, though. Date has not been identified. Uh, the letter was January TBD, I think. To be determined, yes. In Sometime January. In January. Yeah, yeah. But he still has to meet with the Middlesex Retirement um, right. to decide on that date. Mr. Katina. Yeah, I, actually, uh, this, is, this is a great layout. It, it's, uh, I love seeing how, how uh, tight it is and, and um, uh, direct. Uh, but my only question is, you know, I remember when we were advertising for some other spots before, and um, I'm thinking back to the superintendents and the principals and other things for other parts of the town. Um, is 24 days enough? Is that was that what we did for the for the uh, police chief? You know, 24 days to get initial candidates in. I remember when we did that. Uh, did we get enough? so that we can bring it down to three or four. I, I don't want to just have three or four in that 24-day period. Do we, you know, we're trying to get to that end date, and, and we're starting today and just trying to get to that end date. Is, 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 is that where we, is, that we, is there enough fluff in that schedule? Yeah, for, for this level, as well as um, considering that this is going to be uh, uh, in New England, uh, New England wide search. Usually three weeks, minimum three weeks does work, um, but I've seen others also do the four to six week um, announcement. Yeah. 
Good. Okay. Uh, this is great. I like the way this is going. I, I've, 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 this is a wonderful sheet to be able to reference. Um, can we put a box in here or some way of delineating when a task has been accomplished? So going forward, because some of these things overlap a little bit. And yeah. to Mr. Catino's point a minute ago, some of these things may may you know go on longer. So can we, in a future iteration, just make sure we mark what's been accomplished? Um, and then this needs to be on the agenda every single meeting, uh, yeah. at least you know, once a month at least, let's say. Um, but I think this is but terrific so far. Huh? By the format, it looks like it's from Microsoft Project, so that, that should be in there. Already. Okay. Just including it in there. Yeah, let's just make sure we track that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. So with that, I think this is terrific. I, I'm, this is a very nice thing to be able to see. Any, any last questions, comments about that? Okay. Moving on. So, to, I'm sorry. I do have I do have another question. Sure. I'm just looking at this. Uh, we have first round interviews, and then the committee selects three or four finalists for the uh, board of selectmen, and then there's the second round interviews and the assessment center. So, are those three or four finalists just presented to us on paper? Are we approving that to move on to the second round? I'm not sure what what that means. I think one of the lessons from the police chief hiring process was the need to have an open line of communication between the Board of Selectmen and the Selection Committee as the process progresses. This is intended to allow for that. It's not necessarily coming to the Selectmen for a decision, but rather just keeping, you, keeping the Board in the loop. Yeah. And the assessment center, is that the same? Have we decided on an assessment center? No, we have not decided on the assessment center. Again, okay. the strategy is to have the committee drive the process and then rely on some consultant for guidance as we progress. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chair. All right. That's that. So um, let's continue to move ahead uh, because I do think it's important to get that January start date. We, we need to be... <clears throat> If, it, if it's at all possible to make that date, we have to make that date, I think. Item 12, fiscal year 2015 performance evaluation views and action item. The board will conduct performance evaluations for the town manager and police chief. All right, so one of the um, more awkward but, but legally mandated obligations every year of the board is to review our uh, direct reports, of which there are three, the town manager, the police chief, and the fire chief. Fire chief's retiring this year. Um, so, um, so his review is less of an issue, um, but the board does um, want to do um, a review of both the, um, the police chief and the town manager. And so I think the way I'd like to handle this uh, is to, uh, we'll start with the police chief tonight. I think, um, chief, if you want to come up, you're welcome to or whatever. I think what I, I'm just going to read the goals and the summary. Um, we'll go to the board for you've already you've had a chance to see the review you both have seen seen the reviews and be able to comment on them what i'd like to do is read the summary go to the board for comments chief come to you for comments questions concerns we'll bang it back and forth and then we'll um we'll hopefully finalize it okay so with that let's start off here so um this is chief's uh first review year in the town of hockington um uh, he had coming into the year one, two, three, four, five goals, and I'll read them, uh, and I'll just read the comments. First goal, begin the department certification accreditation process. That was to be done by uh, end of the year. In fact, all the goals were to be done by end of the fiscal year except for the last one. Uh, the measure of success was to report to the board on rationale for this, which was a, a goal of his, and provide a timeline of milestones of completion. This goal was rated a success. The project has resources assigned and working and is currently in the self-assessment stage. Second goal was to develop and implement community-based prevention programs in collaboration with community partners and other stakeholders also by end of the year. The measure was development and implementation of programs. This is also rated a success. Examples include, but are not limited to, opioid education and forms, as well as Narcan policy, national night out crime prevention education, senior scams form, jail diversions program and grant, multi-community, autism parent connection partnership, and Alzheimer's alert program. Chief's third goal was to enhance the school safety programs, safety protocols, and traffic safety for the schools. Also by year end, work with the schools to enhance and build programs around these goals was a measure of success. Um, I think that's a big one. You heard my comments the other night about the middle school traffic pattern, which, which I continue to find for absolutely frightening. Um, 
that's rated a success. Examples include, but are not limited to, incident command training for school personnel, revised panic alarm protocols, enhanced communication via dedicated portable radios, a follow the bus program, and an ALICE program, which is active shooter preparedness. Fifth, fourth goal, rather, was performance metrics. By the end of this, the last fiscal year, was to detail a system of measures by which the performance, efficiency, and effectiveness of the department and its individual personnel can be ascertained. This is ranked incomplete. Suffice to say, Chief, we need to move that one forward this year, I think. Um, uh, this is a key criteria for the board in general. Uh, and then the last one is public safety dispatch by January of this, uh, this of 2015. The measure of success was to participate in the project and assist the fire chief with identifying the scope of action, identifying the project manager, identifying minimal operational requirements, and identifying efficiency gains. This has ranked a partial success with the project still ongoing. The project has seen its delays, however, it's nearing final implementation. There's still a great deal of enthusiasm about the benefits it should, surprise, it should provide. The project is expected to be live within days or weeks. Underneath that, the there's a there's a the delineation of strengths and strengths and development opportunities, and then a summary, which is what I'll read. The board's happy with the start Chief Lee has gotten off to, despite not having been at this level of the department prior to joining Hoppington. The experience he's gotten from larger communities and the leadership qualities and vision he has have helped him immensely. We look forward to the coming year and hope to see both continued strength and growth from the chief. We read the chief's performance for fiscal year 2015 above satisfactory which I personally would say is quite a remarkable uh, accomplishment for the first year on a job. Um, so that's a summary, Chief. Let me go to the board for comments, questions. Start with Mr. Herr. We, so, the com now, so here's what happens. I read the review as it stands. We've all had a chance to see the review. I think the question is um, for the board members, do you have comments or questions about the review? Are there items you, you didn't see or want to see or want changed? Um, and then are there any things um, uh, you'd like to add to the review? So while I was here, uh, when Chief Lee was hired, uh, I quickly moved on for a year and was not here to observe and participate uh, routinely uh, with the chief uh, in the process of you know, overseeing the police force uh, through his leadership and so forth. So I don't have a lot of input, uh, frankly, at this point. Um, my sense is that we are going in the right direction with the police department, uh, as we have been for many years, I think, uh, prior to Chief Lee's arrival. Uh, I think he's continued to move us in the right direction. Uh, this is just a gut thing more than anything else, really, and listening to some folks in town. Um, I don't have any specific comments for or against uh, the, the points made there, um, but I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with where we are. Uh, we can always improve. All of us, myself certainly included in this process, uh, here as a town volunteer. Um, but I think that uh, we're on the right path, and I appreciate your service to the community. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Coutinho, over to you. Yeah, I, I, I want to echo um, Mr. Hurst's comments. I, uh, you really came up to speed uh, quickly. And, um, you know, well, your trial by fire came right into the, uh, the marathon uh, 16 months ago. Um, and um, you know it's 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 good to see the, everything improving now with the dispatch coming together and all of that. It's uh, it looks good. Um, uh, I, I I personally like a, like an update on the on the um, lieutenant position and all that stuff. To, we were looking for some some background on that, but uh, that's I think that that that's forthcoming. But thank you very much for for what you're doing. It's doing a great job. Thank you. Mr. Sestari, probably should start with you, actually. Sorry. That's right. Good Chief. Why, sir? Um, first of all, congratulations. And, uh, you know, I, I can't stress uh, how pleased we are with the choice that we made uh, to, to bring you into town, and we're happy that you came here. Um, you know, I think that in reviewing, in reviewing your first year, I look and, you know, I think that you, you really started building uh, from the ground up and uh, too many communities have I guess there's more of a, an aura around the police department of um, I guess society today they, they they don't really want to approach police as much you know there's not that that uh, bond between the police department and the people in the community and probably a lot of that has to do with 
technology and vehicles and this and that. You know, I mean, we talk about community policing. There's not as much, you know, walking the beat, you know, where, where people would talk to other people before. Um, but you've really come in, and I, I think that everybody thought that one of the most difficult things would be for someone from the outside to come into the department and get to know the people in the department and get, get acceptance, gain acceptance. And from what I've seen, you've done that. And you and I have talked and you've, you've uh, sent write-ups on some of the things that you've done. And I think that that's where your success has started this year. And I think it's the foundation of success throughout the community. Um, you've, you've gained the trust. Uh, you've also implemented programs and positions uh, for people there to both allow them a growth path and also to benefit the community and to continue that outreach. Um, we had an incident at our house, and I can't tell you how nice it was to have somebody follow up, you know, a week later saying, hey, you know, uh, if you'd like, we can have some people come over and talk to you about this, talk to you about that, make sure you're comfortable with this. I don't think it's because I'm on the Board of Selectmen. You know, I got the, the, uh, the Everybody sense... Everybody gets the same treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I got the sense that this, this is what happens now in Hopkinton, and it was great to see. Um, so, you know, I, I, I hope that you continue that. Uh, you know, the input that I've gotten from other people through the community and different town organizations and uh, within community organizations. Uh, they said that they've told me that the police department has been you know, incredibly uh, forthcoming with, with time and uh, ideas and working together with them for different programs as well. The list of programs that you've put together over the last year is fantastic. Um, and and I, don't think, I don't think that many of them are, you know, incredibly difficult to put together, but it's just knowing, uh, you know, looking for ideas and then taking the time and the energy to implement them. And so we thank you for that as a community. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that, that um, we as a board would like to see you work on, and, it, and it's in here, um, is just kind of coming back to us with a lot of the progress and, and what's going on in the community and communicating some of that. And that's, it's your responsibility, it's also our responsibility. We need to make sure that we get you on our agenda here Absolutely. so that we can have those dialogues. I look forward to that. But, um, but you know, I think that you've, you've had a fantastic year and uh, you know, we look forward to several more to come. Thank you very much. Mr. Mosher. Chief, I think probably the biggest testament to your ability as chief has come from your own officers. I've heard many, many positive things, uh, both from them and from community members, unsolicited positive comments. Um, coming in from the outside is probably never the optimal situation. Um, I think you've handled it very well. Um, I think also we recognize that the first, the first year in this situation is kind of a year of housekeeping, understanding the dynamics. Uh, understanding the processes we have in place, evaluating, and then kind of determining what your next steps are going to be. So I anticipate uh, the upcoming year um, to be that to be a year where it's it's really key, as as uh, Member Sestari just pointed out, um, to be in communication with the board. Let us know what you're working on. Uh, if you're achieving those metrics, or if you need if you need some help or coordinating with the with the town manager, he has the advantage throughout the review process of working with the board on a daily basis. Um, and I think for any department head, if the opportunity is there and uh, the projects are there to take advantage of that. Um, so, so this will be the year to set the world on fire. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Chief, yeah, from my perspective, I couldn't be happier with your first year here. I think this was great. You, uh, I knew when you came in you were the right guy for the job. Your personality has been terrific. I think the attitude you brought, it's all been said by my colleagues because I think it's so important. I want to say it again. Um, I'm thrilled with the, uh, uh, the, just the vision you've set up in the community and the way you've, you've, told, you've made it clear you want the police force to act. Um, I think um, we are, as I said to you when you interviewed, we're a small town. You know, we don't need uh, uh, overseers as a police force, right? We need an engaged police force. And I think you've done a great job making that clear. Um, uh, 
Uh, and trust me, I've been attentive. So it's been, it's, it's been a terrific year for you. I'm really happy. However, as Mr. <laughs> Moshe made clear, it only gets harder from here on out. Um, so over to you. Any questions, comments, thoughts about, about the review, about the year, anything you need from us? Just sort of tell us what you're thinking on both measures, small and large. Uh, well, I'm extremely grateful for all your comments and, uh, and uh, a lot of the good work that's done, certainly. I had a part in leading it, but we, we have a great team here in town with the leadership in town, de department heads. We all work well together. And uh, I can't say enough about the police department that I inherited. The men and women of that police department shine every day. Uh, besides these goals and things that are going on, there are a lot of big events that happened in the year with the, with the swatting and the handling of the marathon. And they have always stepped up to the plate. Um, they're taking more initiative. Uh, and I'd like to see them getting recognized for that, following up on cases and things, things of that nature. And uh, just the other night, a national night out, so it's, uh, you know, headed up by Steve Buckley. Uh, two years in a row, a great success. Uh, just to show that community involvement it makes me proud. It makes me proud to see the men and women out there that rep represent the police department, engaging the community. And it's just uh, it's a, an overwhelming feeling. And I couldn't be happier working in this town. Uh, there's so much, so much commitment from the public, and there's such a sense of community here. And uh, I certainly hope I'm here for a long time to to enjoy it and, and continue this work. Well, there, there was one thing that I, I wanted to mention. It was about working with Norman a little bit more. If I can work with Norman more, I'm going to have to move into his house, and he doesn't want that. That's I okay. snore. He can't afford my grocery bill. <laughs> Well, I, I can't say enough, uh, and, I, and I appreciate the comments. And I'm certainly looking forward to, to more dialogue with the Board of Selectmen and keeping it updated on a regular basis. I probably should have took a more a sort of role in maybe looking for time, getting on the agenda more. But I'm glad to hear that you're looking for that type of feedback, and I certainly will look forward to giving it and uh, working ahead with my goals next year with, with all your input. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Does anybody have any other comments um, about this? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Harry. You got something? No, I'm all set. Thanks. Okay. So um, uh, if there's no comments, Chair, I entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, Chief's performance review as written. Um, so moved. And also the Chair to second. Say. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any further discussion on this? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimous. Chief, congratulations on a terrific first year um, from housekeeping. So I'll get this signed and get it back to you for the records. Um, I believe in your contract there's a, there's a pay increase that you're eligible for. And um, so I need to review that, get the data, and the board will discuss that. And I think we'll decide that the next meeting um, once I confirm all that. And the second thing is uh, we are going to need goals from you for the next year to yes. go through and have the board approved. So if I could ask you to pull those together for the next meeting, Absolutely. I'd like to go through that then. I'm uh, currently working on uh, with the command staff and look okay. forward for some input as well. Good. Thank Thanks you. again, Chief. Thanks, Great year. Chief. <clears throat> All right. Now the tough one. On to the town manager. So, um, uh, same as before, let me just read the, the summary and then um, uh, the goals and then the summary, and then we'll do the same process. So, town manager had three goals this year. Uh, three big goals this year. Develop, first was develop and, develop and implement a plan to address OPIB liability. Uh, all those goals, by the way, were due by the end of the fiscal year, June 30th. The measures of su success were to complete the actual value, actuarial evaluation of OPEB, develop a plan for public participation and outreach, develop OPEB pre-funding plan to be incorporated in the fiscal 2016 town budget and town meeting process. This goal is ranked a success. Norman worked successfully with the Director of Finance to engage the services of an actuarial consulting firm who presented various funding options and impacts to the board. Further, the written report and materials were also provided and available to the public. The selectman's preferred strategy was also incorporated in the 15, fiscal year 2016 budget that was approved at town meeting. Second goal was continuing to support the Board of Selectmen and staff in finalizing the downtown corridor project, coming back to our undergrounding of a minute ago. The measure of success was following the 25% approval. The goal was to collaborate to recruit members to the Main Street Corridor, collaborate to develop work plan for the committee, and work with the committee to develop schedule for and hold public participation forms, and seek funding to bring the design to the 100% design phase. After the 100% design phase, the goal is to ensure the project remains in the tip. 
This goal, this goal is marked ongoing. The decision was made to postpone the formation of the Main Street Quarter Group until Mass DOT completes the 25% review and determined scope. Norman has done an excellent job in thinking outside the box and coming up with ways to fund the design of the Downtown Quarter Project. In large part due to these efforts, there has been no additional cost to the taxpayers in this latest phase. The third goal was to coordinate the consolidation of trail network projects and identify funding options in relation thereto. Uh, the measure of success was to present options and recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. Success, and I would actually say this has been a tremendous success. Um, this has been a great success, is what the, what the report says, and the town's trail network has begun to show a more complete vision. Thanks to the hard work of Norman and his team, the funding and land acquisitions are also falling into a place to allow us to realize this vision. I do think that was a remarkable success this year. Uh, Norman's summary is, uh, is quite uh, short, but to the point, Norman's performance has been clearly outstanding. Um, so with that, let's go start off with Mr. Sistari. Any um, uh, comments, discussion topics, things you want to change? Yeah, we made it through another year with him, huh? <laughs> uh, um, I've, I've long been a big supporter of Mr. Kamalo. Um, you know, I think that, uh, well, in a conversation earlier with one of the other members of the board, uh, you know, we were talking, and they were mentioning that, you know, through the year there there may be uh, bumps in the road, um, little stumbling blocks here and there, but in the end, uh, the final results are what we look at. And uh, Norman has continued to take the town to levels higher than we were at the prior year, and uh, he's he's done it through an incredible amount of hard work. Um, I know that one of the things that I have tried to work with Norman on uh, since, since the first time I was chair, I guess three or four years ago, was um, sometimes step, you know, taking the foot off the gas a little bit and taking some vacation time. <laughs> and you know, over, over the years, it's been something where uh, year after year, we find out that Norman only used, you know, one week of vacation or maybe a week and a half. Um, and we've all uh, worked with him and we've witnessed the tremendous number of hours that he puts in, especially throughout the budget season from, you know, January to, you know, right through to town meeting in May. And, you know, he doesn't, he, he's no slouch the rest of the year either. Um, and, uh, you know, I, not, not for this, not for this review because it's a new fiscal year, but, um, I was incredibly happy to see that, uh, he did take a two week vacation this year already. So, uh, so he's, he's beginning to, uh, I guess heed some advice and, and, and learn a little bit about that. But, uh, you know, kind of getting back to, getting back to the review, um, you know, he always seems to bring us out, uh, bring us through in shining colors. Um, are there things that he can work on? Um, certainly, there are things that there are things that uh, he can work on, and I think that the you know one of the things that was mentioned in the review here is you know not necessarily his fault because I think it was uh, you know more of uh, I'll use the word again tonight just a confluence of events where we had some turnover this year in town hall. And, uh, you know, I think that it's in the review simply because he is in charge of town hall. And so at some level, uh, you know, the manager needs to take responsibility for things that happen, even though it's individual choices that, that uh, may result in that. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that he's been, he's been doing great over the years, putting together an incredibly strong team of uh, of managers around him, and I think that uh, I trust that he will continue to do that, and um, I think that Hopkinton is very lucky to have him in the seat that he's in. I look around at the uh, other area towns, and I don't see anybody uh, getting getting talent at the level that we have uh, in in this position. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Gatino. Yeah, I'm I'm very pleased with uh, with this year. Um, you know, if I can just start with the with the trails, um, 
you know, we're making strides left and right. We, the the um, arts on the trail just um, last week, uh, a week and a half ago, when, that I had to do on crutches. It was a, delightful for me, but it was great to see, and it was a great effort. Um, the way you're working with um, with the trails committee to make sure we get these land, land uh, acquisitions so we can pull that all together. That That's something that's really going to help the town in, 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 in so many ways. Um, you know, I really appreciate all you do for us. We're, people forget that we're volunteers, and um, we try and do the best we can, and, and I really appreciate how much that you protect us almost to a fault, and I think that that's part of what, what, what uh, Mr. Starry was talking about, that, that you take on so much and take on more that's necessary sometimes to make sure that the, the job gets done. But uh, we're here for you, if you whenever you need help, and because you've always been there. Even when I was vice chairman of the planning board, you were always there for me, always had an open door policy, and I and, and I really appreciate it. And I really also appreciated that you actually did turn off um, two weeks ago and really didn't answer your phone. I tested it. I called you. You didn't answer, and uh, that's why I left you that message. Good, you did it. You didn't answer. But so thank you very much for a great year. Over to Mr. Mosher. Norman, thanks for the tremendous amount of effort and, and true caring that you put into this town. Um, I think if you want to give yourself a raise, work less hours. Your hourly rate's terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, but as, Mr., as Chairman Palaco mentioned earlier, or maybe it was Mr. Sestari, that uh, we have to take a look at the results. And uh, the town continues to move forward. Um, year on year is, continues to be better. We're achieving uh, milestones now um, are actually coming together. Things that were just talked about a few years ago are now, now coming to fruition. Uh, that being said, when there are difficulties, um, I would like to see just, just summaries to the board, uh, a little more, a little more situ uh, situational awareness um, to the board so that we can deal with that or, or as uh, Mr. Catino pointed out, help you in any way that we can uh, or work within the community as we were elected to do. Um, but I would uh, just say keep up the hard work, um, maybe work a little less, <clears throat> and uh, look forward to another productive year. So thank you. And over Thanks. to Mr. Herr. Similar to uh, Chief Lee in his year last year, uh, I wasn't here for a lot of this, uh, so I'd, some of the particulars in the goals and some of the activities that went forward or went on, uh, I'm not privy to all the details there. Um, in general, um, I think Mr. Kamala does an excellent job on behalf of the community. Um, you know, I was fortunate to be the chair when we hired Mr. Kamala with uh, my colleagues on the board at that time, I think seven years ago now. We're going into our seventh year, does that sound right? And uh, I think we've done uh, great work uh, since Mr. Kamala arrived. There's more to be done, uh, but I, I find Mr. Kamala's demeanor, uh, his uh, interaction with people, uh, his knowledge of the community, uh, that in particular has grown over the years and he understands more uh, the nuances of Hopkinton which is important for the job uh, but I think in general how he interacts with people how he interacts with us with the board with myself in particular anyway uh, I think is always professional it's fun we have a lot of fun dialogue back and forth and I think that's important in any workplace and I'd encourage us to continue to create a fun and healthy environment uh, in the building here um, Again, I think uh, in terms of specifics of what happened last year, it's hard for me to get into that. Uh, I, I've seen a couple of things happen, very positive things. I think the trail uh, development in the community is second to none. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get to art on the trail a week or so back, but I drove by today. I usually I've run down there before, uh, and I saw the mailbox or whatever it is right out the front of the trail there. That's, I can't wait to go for a run now. It's really cool. Uh, so those kinds of developments, those assets, I think Mr. Kamala does extremely well with. Uh, he has a plan in his mind, he has a plan on paper, and he implements. And I think we should continue to do that. We've got a lot more we want to develop. Uh, he's always very conscious of the taxpayer's dollars, uh, sometimes uh, to a fault, which is a good fault, by the way. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, he's very frugal with our money. He's very frugal with the taxpayer's money, and uh, I would encourage him to continue to be that way. Uh, but we can't be penny wise and pound foolish sometimes, but we can always sort those things out. The only area where I see an opportunity for improvement, uh, and we all have them, as I mentioned to Chief Lee, I have opportunities for improvement in my role as a selectman. He has them in his role as a chief. Other people have them in their roles in town, and you have them in your role as a town manager. Uh, I was I was very concerned about town meeting this year. Uh, I don't put that all on the uh, on the lap or at the shoes of, of the town manager here, uh, but I think as a community, with you leading the charge to get ready for town meeting, uh, we've got to we've got to uh, uh, play a better game. So if you've had six town meetings now, is that correct? You're five and one. Okay, that's pretty good. You won five <laughs> games. You're going to the playoffs. But we didn't win that one last year. And uh, I think as a community, as the coach, as the leader, we need to win every game we play. And that one, for whatever reasons, it just it's kind of fell apart on us a little bit. So uh, that's an area of opportunity to work on. Uh, but again, you won the five before that. So I'm sure we can get back to our winning ways uh, with town meeting next year and the years that follow. Other than that, I think he does an excellent job, and I love working with him. Back to Mr. Mosh. Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to belabor the point, but Mr. Herr brought up, brought up a couple of things. That I, just, I just want to mention to Norman that the board asks a lot of you, as you well know, and we expect a lot. But sometimes if, if we're not giving the tools that you need, because we're the ones that enable the tools, we need to know that sooner rather than later. And I guess that would just, just summarize it. I mean, it's, cause it's up to us to ensure that we prepare him for what we're asking him to do. And back over to Mr. Starr, Ron. Too. Yeah, you know, and, and to that point, um, you know, I guess kind of bringing things back to the town meeting and also the point that Mr. Mosier made. Um, first of all, Mr. Herr, Mr. Herr uh, says that the town manager is five and one. Uh, but if we go back to the theme of looking at the results and how things ended up turning out, I think that even with this town meeting, uh, that, that was in the W column. I think a lot of good things happened at that meeting. Um, again, there may have been a rough road on the way there, but in the end, a lot of good things happened. One comment that I wanted to make, though, uh, around that town meeting is, and also on the theme of how hard Mr. Kamala works, is that this year the board uh, went to bat for Mr. Kamalo in trying to uh, get uh, allocation for a new position to help him out and help relieve some of this workload for an assistant town manager. And uh, the town rejected that. Um, I take some of the responsibility for that as being the, the chairman who is presenting that effort uh, in front of town meeting. Uh, I hope that the board uh, we'll review the workload again this year, and if it feels that it's appropriate, I hope we try to budget for that position again. Um, this year we saw two additional positions being added to the planning board that essentially equated to being an assistant uh, town, town planner and uh, helping out with the, uh, all the duties that are going on over in the planning area. And that's incredibly important, and I'm not saying that they don't need that, However, uh, as we're adding positions, we've also added positions to the police department uh, to help with the management structure over there. And this is something that we've discussed for several years now. And I know that uh, some people saw meeting minutes and they thought that we just brought it up about a month before a town meeting and all of a sudden we were running with it. Uh, but that's not the case, and I think that Mr. Mosier made the point also at town meeting. It's something that we had been discussing for several years, and uh, I think the town needs to be aware of uh, the workload of not only Mr. Kamalo, but all the folks under the town organization and the fact that, um, yes, the town does have fewer employees uh, in the town government side of the house uh, now than it did when Mr. Kamalo started in his position. And so I think we need to be cognizant of how hard people are working and the demands that are being put on them. And we need to give them that support. And uh, so I hope this year, again, if the board reviews the workloads and, and what we're trying to accomplish, 
if the board feels that it, uh, uh, in order to accomplish that and be reasonable, that we need to bring in another position, I hope that we don't shy away from that. Thank you for that. Back across to Mr. Hurst. This is where the, this is where the public review process gets fun. <laughs> Um, okay, I'll give you six and zero. Oh. I'll give you six and zero. Oh. We won the game. You're right. We won the game. We got done. The board got done. The town got done. What it wanted to do at town meeting, by and large, minus a couple articles, whatever. But it was a sloppy game. Lots of penalty flags. Right? <laughs> Is that a fair statement? It was a. It was a. It was a rough road. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So six and zero. Oh, I'll give you a winning six and zero oh undefeated record at town meeting, and that's just one piece of the job, by the way. That's why I don't want to focus too much on this. Uh, but it was, a, it was a rough game. It was a rough road. So we want to smooth that out again going Absolutely. forward. Because the first five, Absolutely. I thought, were extremely smooth and very well run, and the results came as we wanted and so forth. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you that. Thank you for schooling me on <clears throat> his record. <laughs> uh, from my perspective, Norman, um, Coming back to the review, <laughs> focusing narrowly, uh, I liked these three goals very much this year. I thought they were terrific. They were meaningful. Um, uh, one with the financial one I liked. The OPEB has been something we've talked about for a long time. I was thrilled we made progress there. Uh, the downtown corridor, again, that's a visionary project. It's going to take a few more years to get going of full speed, but it's making good progress. We're inching our way along. We're talking now about undergrounding, right? We're moving that forward. So. That's a great kind of example of your long-term um, activities that just sticking with things over time. And then the trails is something where I think we just had a breakthrough this year, quite honestly. We've, we've worked on it for a while. We've had a lot of planning, a lot of contributions. And all of a sudden, it just seems like we're, we're all in open field running. We've got a bunch of land. Um, we've got this kind of trails plan set up. The center trail is phenomenal, right? We've got all these things happening. So that's one that I just I like because it's something we've been inching away along. And all of a sudden, it felt like we broke through this year and made, made great progress. So. What I liked about your goals this year was that um, I think they were all meaningful for the community and, um, uh, and, 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 and sort of uh, in high impact. And I liked the fact that in all of them, I think we did a terrific job making great progress. And, um, and again, as the, as the person who's on a day-to-day -day basis, making sure those move forward, I, want to, I need to commend you fully for, for making all that happen. Because none of that wouldn't happen if you hadn't been on every single day. So that's the, on the goals. Stepping back a little more broadly to review, I think part of your problem sometimes is that you make things in town run so exceptionally well that we sometimes feel like perfection is the standard. Um, and I remember we had, this view, we had this discussion a couple of years ago. Clearly outstanding does not mean infallible. I remember that and, discussion. Um, right. And so um, uh, I, I will frankly say I think the board's been spoiled. Um, I think a lot of uh, things just sort of run really, really smoothly. And so when I, when I do think that when we have hiccups, like the town meeting, when we have some operational challenges that are inevitably going to occur in an in a entity of this size, um, I think they become even more dramatically visible because it's so far outside this, the, the, the boundaries of our typical experience with you. Um, so uh, what I will say is we have had some challenges in the past year. We have some things we're going to have to work on this year. Um, that comes with the job. I, I, I'm utterly comfortable you're um, capable of dealing with them, and we'll do so uh, terrific in a terrific fashion. Um, uh, uh, but this is what happens. I mean, some, some years are going to be better than others, and some years things are going to happen. Um, uh, just because that's, that's what happens is problems arise, and we're just going to have to work our way through them. But I, but I continue to believe that in all cases, you make them better much faster than they would be. I don't think they occur as frequently as they might if you weren't controlling this this well. And, um, and I'm sure whatever we have, we'll make our way through and fix it. So from my perspective, I think a well-earned review, um, another outstanding year. I couldn't be more pleased to have this next year for us to work on some other good stuff. So with, yes. I didn't know you had one. It was by request only. Oh, I didn't know you had one. I don't go two rounds unless you ask for it. Okay, okay. Just to, 
just to reiterate to the public. Okay, everybody doesn't get two cuts at the apple. I want to be automatically. No, 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 just like what you were saying, we, we, we have, we have uh, um, been expecting perfection. And what I don't, think the public, I don't think what the public understands is, is that well, he to to puts in okay. you know, 12 hours a day sometimes. I just looked over at that at the um, visioning committee and how he was so instrumental in helping us come to that vision. I need vision to wrap scene. this up. So are you, are you, are you have anything to make a comment on the review? Yes. Well, I just wanted. Okay. That, I'm fine then. <laughs> No, nah, but it's, it's, it it's the, no, no, because we, 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 the only thing that was killed at town meeting was the assistant town manager. We passed $21 million worth of spending, and, we've, and, and, and we, we have uh, nine, nine more people in, in, the, in the police department. So four more okay, in the, in you're the off, we're, off, we're off target okay. now. But, okay. so, hey, can I make a comment? <laughs> no. Mr. Kamalo, over to you. Do you have any comments about your My guy, I'm I'm we'll be here for a night. Do you have any more? Do you have any comments on your order? Review? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's certainly, uh, I think, an, an honor and a privilege to, to serve this community, uh, work with this board. Uh, you have been uh, solid business partners, uh, as well as uh, to work alongside my colleagues here at Town Hall, DPW, school side, fire department. Um, all the wonderful things that you've said truly reflect the effort of a lot of people here. Um, I, I am certainly humbled by um, your, your feedback. Uh, as we have always said uh, here at Town Hall, we appreciate your feedback, we appreciate the community's feedback. Uh, one thing that we continue to enjoy, I think, is the wonderful effort, commitment, uh, and expertise provided by boards and committees like yourselves. Um, uh, as I said earlier, you certainly make our, our lives much easier. Uh, you make our jobs enjoyable. The high expectations that you set for us, in fact, uh, when I speak with everybody here at Town Hall, are the very reasons why we come back every day to, to, to work harder. Uh, and, and, and so, um, with that, I really want to thank the board uh, for your guidance, uh, for your support. Uh, for also your continuous uh, feedback. I, I know people think that this is the only time you give me feedback. I, I get your feedback almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I, I also want to thank the, the hard, honest efforts by the uh, town staff, um, as well as the school side. Uh, there are many things that we worked on uh, this, this past year that involved a lot of effort from the school side, and we appreciate that. <clears throat> and most importantly, all the wonderful projects we work on would not be possible without the community support. Good. Thank you. Okay. So uh, on that note, unless anybody has anything else to say, and I cringe when I offer that up, do we'll um, chair will entertain a motion to approve the town manager's fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. I have a motion and an angry second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. President not voting. That passes unanimously. Um, Mr. Kamalo, also in executive session uh, earlier this evening, the board uh, uh, reviewed salary data for comparable towns. Actually, that was another one of your accomplishments, although it's this fiscal year, which was helping us pull together a standard set of data. Um, and, uh, and using that data as a guide, um, discussed a, uh, a contractual increase for you based upon um, uh, the merit. Uh, uh, Chad, can I get you here for a minute? Um, and the board voted in executive session to um, to provide you with a 3% salary increase for fiscal year 2016. Can I get the, uh, if it's a, uh, can we get a board, uh, can we get a motion and a second to validate that in public session? I'll make a motion uh, to approve the board increasing the town manager's salary by 3%. Second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion on that topic? All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye opposed, president not voting, that's unanimous. So 3% salary increase for uh, fiscal year 2016 will be reflected as soon as possible. Also, Mr. Kamalo, if um, for the next uh, meeting, if you could have goals put together that we could review and, and approve, I'd appreciate it. Okay. So again, exceptional uh, year for the town manager and for the police chief, both making the board of selectmen look good, which is all that really matters. Um, Okay, 
Item 13 on the agenda, the Pratt Farm Master Plan discussion. The Board will discuss the process to master plan the Pratt Farm parcel. Mr. Kamal, over to you. Yes, um, let, let me speak directly to, 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 to the process. Um, our recommendation to staff is that the Board authorize uh, the Town Manager to uh, put together a charge uh, for this committee. And that charge will be presented at the Board of Selectmen's next scheduled meeting. Um, and the, the broad goals of the, uh, of, the charting, of the charge will include the following. One, putting together a master plan that will account for all the discussion points that were covered during the negotiations between the town uh, and the Pratt family, as well as uh, some of the suggestions that came um, from the uh, town meeting discussions. Number two, make sure that this process is, is participatory, it's inclusive of all town boards that are impacted. Uh, and finally, that we come up with a very tight, well-defined schedule for the deliverables. Has all that been, do we own it? Has that all been settled and, and all that closing? No, we, closing? Yeah, we, we no, we're not there yet. Okay. Yep. Um, I just make a book putting all this effort and I just want to make sure that uh, it's going to close it's just a function of, of getting the paperwork done and there's some things that have to there were some conditions to close and they have to get satisfied beautiful um, no I'm, 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 I'm fine with it at this point Mr. Hart I, I missed what you said the last thing there tight schedules was that specific to appointing or what were you saying there yeah it's tight schedule in terms of the deliverables you will recall that during town, the preparations for town meeting and during the negotiations, uh, there were certain issues that were, were identified as points of interest, including the relationship with the Scots Association, um, the desire by most of the people who participated in the discussions uh, to see some form of uh, community-based agriculture uh, continue on the parcel. Uh, and also the feedback that we received in terms of uh, whether the parcel could be um, a part of our wider consideration for uh, broadening our water resources in town. Okay. So, so Mr. Chair, at town meeting, when we purchased this land, um, or when we voted to appropriate the funds to purchase the land, do we have any restrictions against this land as to what the town could do with it? Well, recall that part of the agreement, part of the, the concept, in fact, a large part of the large driver of the concept was this agreement we, we signed with the boys, with the, with scouts, the scouts in town, right. boy and girl scouts and cub scouts and brownies, um, to allow them to build a house on the property and to use a portion of the property for their own purposes. And in exchange, they're supposed to help the town do trail networks and maintain the property and all those other things. So there is, there is an agreement with the scouts to, um, to do this mutual collaboratively. Right. What, that was um, the major topic of use that was discussed. Right. Nothing so, else was really discussed that I recall. Well, again, this is why we need to master plan it. I mean, I, mean I, I don't want to get ahead of the rest of the board being able to talk, but that's why we need to master plan it, right? Because we need to, because the scouts have money and uh, you know that's burning a hole in their pocket, and they want to get started on a house as quick as they can. So, so. But what we've always told them is we think we know where more or less where the house needs to go. Remember, I put the little the little squishy drawings at town meeting, but we need to we need to finalize all that. So the reason this process has to get moving is because the scouts are appropriately eager to get started. Um, however, we have other uses we don't want to either exclude by doing that or at least be, cogni you know, be cognizant of, like do we want to do a CSA, do we want to do something else in town. Um, I, I, I genuinely, this isn't my specialty, I generally don't know what else we might do with the property, but it seems like it, we need to get a thoughtful group together to actually have this discussion, including the scouts. So the, 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 Mr. Catino's point is well taken that we haven't actually um, closed the property yet, but that's going to happen. Mm. So uh, it, uh, the reason this is on the agenda tonight is because we, we have promised to the scouts and to the community that we are going to master plan this parcel. And it, would, and it would seem like a good thing for the board to start moving ahead on getting a group together to do that. Um, in order that the scouts may not be unnecessarily delayed in getting things started. 
I had told them they can be using that land for cookouts in the fall, and I'd like to follow up on that. So the reason for my question is, and I, and I agree with what you're saying and, and why we need to get rolling here, uh, there were no restrictions. I'm not advocating that we want to pave that place over. That's not what I'm saying at all. But that's a, that's a piece of land, a great piece of land in an area of town where we've had some sensitive discussions over the years. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to start that all over again. So we should be very clear up front with our expectations, which are we want to do a master plan. Mm -hmm. The scouts were part of the process because of that was discussed at town meeting at length. Um, we're wide open to other areas or other opportunities. We don't need to pave it over. We don't need to develop it. We don't need to do anything, really. But we, we're open to everything. Right. And I think it's very clear that we start out with that understanding, and we're very clear that we're open to listening, but that we're going to be respectful of the land and the area and the community that it sits. Yeah, to your point, I think the general, right, it's generally <coughs> agreed that that land is, is expected to stay primarily in its natural state. This is, we didn't buy this for fields, we didn't buy this for parking lots, we didn't buy this for anything else. It's intended, it, the, well, it wasn't promised, but, the, but the, the sort of implicit understanding was it's going to be more or less maintained as it is, um, and ideally have some farming component, and I think you're right. So, so there are some things that just pragmatically won't happen, but, but within the constraints of that, of keeping it more or less natural, what do we do with it, is the question we need to answer. Right. Okay. okay. Mr. Moore, I'm sorry I jumped ahead of you, but... No, that's okay. Uh, I think um, <clears throat> both your and Mr. Her comments reflect thoughts that I've had. We need to be careful that this isn't viewed as a potential extension of the DPW or of the Fruit Street Wastewater Treatment Plant or of the Fruit Street Fields. This is a property that has uh, unique features unto itself. It's, it's got sentimental and historical value, and it's got uh, tremendous community value if executed properly. Um, I think because there are so many interests, we have to be very cautious uh, about who we appoint and, and what the charge of that committee is. Um, and I think if we, if we follow those steps, we'll look back years from now and, and the town will be very pleased that we've done what we did or that what we're going to do. Okay. you have something, John? I thought you, oh, did, Todd, I didn't go to you. No questions. Good. Comments. Okay. So, Ms. Kamal, I think what we need here is a, is a, a, a charter, right? A, 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 an outline for committee that would incorporate the Board of Selectmen, I think. Um, or maybe not, I don't know. But certainly the Scouts and other advocacy groups in the, in the community. Um, is it the consensus of the Board that we'd like to see the, the town manager pull together some, some concept of a committee that we can discuss in the next meeting? It was something like the Fruit Street Committee that we had several years ago. That might work. Well, I would disagree with that. I would say, I would say that this this probably needs a, f a fresh take at things. Um, I would like a member of the board of select and be on the committee. Um, the board's kind of led the charge, and maybe maybe John, um, you meant in structure versus in structure, right? Okay, so so if that's the case, then I'm I'm more in agreement then in, in structure versus makeup. But I want to be sure that we can pull in uh, a fresh perspective um, and get get some of these uh, these stakeholders for this pro newer stakeholders in, right. uh, involved in this project. Yeah, yeah. I'd love, and I know this may be more of a question for you, John, than anything. I I don't know. I'd love to find a CSA type advocate, somebody who could think about that, right? Um, right. I mean, we probably need to, we probably want to include the trails committee because one of the concepts we discussed was having trails that connect to Fruit Street. There isn't a great connection to Fruit Street, but there is one, so there's a pathway there. I mean, we should be we should be to your point. I think we should be think about a novel composition of a committee for a, for a, for a, an unusual parcel. Maybe is the right answer. Um, so it's scouts, parks and rec. Parks and rec. I don't know though. See, I don't know that I think. I view it as a passive recreational opportunity. Right. Parks and rec is more the fields, and you know the asset based. Right. Um, well, I don't know. Activities and recreation. I think more tra the trails group would be more of my thought because mm -hmm. the extent you have yeah. anything there, you're going to have trails that are going to come. Well, out. when we think about the effect of the trail, I'm sorry. Um, when we think about what happened with Fruit Street, we had this big composition. We split it up, and the schools were going to get some, the cemeteries were going to get some. And when we think of what actually ended up it being used for, was not something that we had 
we had uh, anticipated. But, but it was a, sorry, Mr. Chair, it was a two, it was a four asset <laughs> purchase. Four assets were going in and they were discussed widely in advance of the purchase of that land. Mm -hmm. This land purchase was a very passive uh, activity focus. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to maintain the spirit of that. We, we don't have a need in town to go pay that over. No. I keep saying that expression because it resonates certainly with some of us anyway. You know, we don't, we don't have that need. And I don't want to create a need just because we have the land. That's, I guess, my concern here is that, okay, we've got this land, so let's just go do something with it. Right. We don't need to do anything with it. Amen. Other than the trails and the, and the scouts and maybe some other farming, you know, some other light use. But we didn't buy this land for assets like we bought the Fruit Street property for wells, for wastewater, for fields, and the school, and the DPW. So they we got three water. out of the five. Well, the well was one concept. Yeah, the well, we're going to look for water. water was, yeah, okay. That's, that's, yeah. I'm okay with that because <coughs> okay, what, what yeah, does well do? You got a little yeah, building in the middle of nowhere. Who cares? It's nothing, right. You know? So I, I think we, we just got to be careful with how we set the expectations for the use of the land. So, Mr. Kamal, let's, we need to think. So let's maybe you can go off and ponder this. I mean, I think the consensus, what I'm hearing from the board is, Passive focus, minimal impact on the land. Remember, part of the selling the point to the town was the view shed we want to protect, right? So whatever we do should protect that. Clearly, it's going to have to involve the scouts, probably trails committee, if we could find an agricultural entity or something. I'm not even sure what you call it. You know, an advocate for CSA, that might be attractive. But um, I have no problem with Parks and Rec participating, but as long as we all participate with the same understanding of what we're trying to do. But I also want to keep this under control of the Board of Selectmen, right? I don't, want, I, want, I don't want this to start flipping over to people. We're not going to flip part of the property to Parks and Rec. I, and so. I agree with all these comments, but I also want to caution people uh, that we don't, we don't want it to seem like we're picking a committee to come up with the answer that we're defining right now. You know, so let's, you know, let's, we can kind of set some, we can kind of set I guess the, the, the vision that we think that uh, town meeting had, but let's let the committee come to their own conclusion. Right, but I think what we're talking about, Mr. Starry, is the, is the composition of the committee probably needs to be somewhat different than we typically do, because it's, it's not going to be no, I understand. cut chopped up. Okay. But the problem is, or the, the concern I have is, it's almost like when we open up the warrant for town meeting then everybody comes and wants to get in on the act and they want to get their article and that's all within the bylaws of the community that's great but like when we get a piece of land everybody wants to get in and get on get in on it and and i don't think that's what this land was acquired for well maybe what we should do as, to, as we think about structure and we don't have to decide this tonight but just to put it out there would be think about a way that the board of selectmen and the scouts who are the two right have have a, a, a a level of control over the outcome, right? So certainly two appointees, maybe we make it a large appointee as well, right? We can sort of, to, to make sure it goes along the path that we all, that the, the, our two groups agreed upon prior to town meeting. So, okay. Good. Is there enough on that? Anybody else got any thoughts about how to, how to do, design the charter, <clears throat> what to involve, not to involve? Mr. Kamal, do you have enough to give you ammunition to go off and ponder this and, and come back with something? I think we have enough information okay. and direction from the board. Okay. Well, yeah, we need to get this moving, though, because the scouts want, rightfully, want to get going. Okay. Uh, that's it on that. Uh, in the same vein, the next item on the agenda is 14, Hayden Road Parcels Master Plan, another discussion and action item. The board will discuss the process to master plan the town on parcels on Hayden Road. So, again, this is the exact same thing. Same thing. We bought the two properties. Uh, it ties into EMC Park. Um, at the board's meeting, uh, July 29th, we had some discussion of kind of nailed down the location of the school and all, so there'll be some things we have to work around. But I think the thought process here was that we would um, look to do a master plan that would start to at least, may not delineate uses, but delineate zones for certain parts of town and start to think about how to tie an EMC to this existing property. Mr. Kamal, you want to take it from there? Um, yes. I think in, in terms of, of the actual geographic area for the plan, um, we want to cover EMC Park. We want to cover the remainder of the Irvine property that's not being used for the school, um, the Todaro parcel as well. Um, in terms of stated interest at, at this point, uh, clearly um, 
Park and Rec because they do have uh, control over EMC. Uh, the Trails uh, Committee, they have identified uh, specific interests uh, on the property. <coughs> um, school sign, I think they will be impacted as the most immediate neighbor. Um, uh, and also, I, just based on, on foot traffic um, uh, uh, here at Town Hall, uh, the neighborhood does have an interest in, in, in the issues that, that, that are coming up uh, regarding these parcels. Um, Board of Selectmen um, should, should, uh, should definitely be involved. Um, I don't, there will be a need also to, 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 to have a land use component. Yes, you guys. Uh, and, and, and clearly, I think the, yeah, and clearly <laughs> the, the interest of the planning board, <laughs> the interest of the planning board I think should be accounted for as we think through the, the composition of the committee. In terms of uh, our deadlines, um, I think what I need the board to be aware of uh, clearly are uh, the interests of the school, uh, the, in the interests of the trials committee. Um, they, they, they have some priorities that may be impacted by this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anybody have comments, questions, Mr. Sistari? No. Mr. Katina? No. Mr. Mosier? Yeah, I do have a comment. Um, and I don't know how this, this plan is all going to pan out, obviously, but uh, from the school standpoint, I don't know what our future needs are going to be, but it's obviously an ideal piece of land to continue to expand. Um, and there's been just a little bit, the topic has come up over how much of that land the, the school should retain for the project. And I would just say that as we look at that, um, perhaps we consider non-permanent uses that would afford flexibility should that come to fruition in the future, or we have some projections that can say the likelihood of the demand for that in the future um, while we're executing this master plan. Okay, so Mr. Hart. I view this land as completely opposite of the Pratt property uh, in terms of why it was purchased and, and how we should try to move it forward. Um, I think this was a hard asset purchase, uh, purchase for a hard asset development in the school uh, and ancillary uh, uses around that and also town uses uh, sort of ancillary to that. Uh, so I think this is a different, um, uh, a different project, and I think it requires a different approach, and I think we should have different expectations for how we're going to develop it. We can't get into that tonight because I know it's a big can of worms, but I just see this as wholly different than what we just talked about for five minutes about Pratt property. I don't think we should pave it over. I'm sorry? I don't think we should pave this one over. Uh, no, but it's going to get built over <laughs> a good chunk of it. So it's a different piece, you know, or pieces. From my perspective, you, you both took my points. This is a pragmatic development parcel, so we should have a different composition of a committee, including planning board folks like that. And then to Mr. Moshe's point, right, we might as well cross this bridge early. There's going to be a debate about how much we give to the schools versus retain for the town, which doesn't mean we couldn't give to the schools later, but we should, we might as well start having those conversations because I'm sure there's going to be a bid-ask spread on, on what goes over. Um, and um, uh, I think the town should um, given that the schools don't really have a plan for it, I think the should, town should retain it uh, pending some further plans. I mean, just think about fields as an ancillary use to a school, right? So there's all kinds of synergies there, but it just has to take a different approach. And we've got to get on it sooner than later because the school itself is, that's charging ahead. Next. Yeah, okay. So let's think about a committee. If we can do a charge for them as well, let's, let's have a discussion about that and let's make it look materially different. Logistical issue. Yes. Um, the board will be assuming responsibility for two grand master plans. Mm -hmm. um, would there be any consideration on the board's part in including as part of the charge some delegation uh, of responsibility? Well, I think, uh, well, I don't know, not to speak to the board, my opinion would be in the Hayden Row, I think we're less concerned about highly controlling it than we are uh, than we are Fruit Street. But I don't know, does anyone have high up an opinion? Um, I don't have any concerns with the direction we're going in right now. I don't understand the question. I think the board's going to be overtasked. Yeah, and I'm thinking perhaps this is 
this is an assignment that could be delegated to another town board. Namely? Don't want to preempt the boards. <laughs> so, through, yeah. the, through the chair. I'm, I'm simply we, we how own much visibility we can I, I build into the chart. Yes, I appreciate Mr. Kamala's consideration. If we get to that point, we could certainly reconsider his words. But I, I think right now the board's been the drivers of these projects right. from the start. And I think it's important that we maintain the integrity of, of, I guess, the vision that the board has had mm -hmm. uh, going forward. <clears throat> Maybe a point where, uh, you know, we're out of the 60,000-foot picture and, and we can hand it off if we're overtasked. Yeah. Uh, but for now, I'd prefer that the board coordinate these efforts. And I agree. I, we gave a commitment to the town that we were going to, to get them to buy these. I think it's our obligation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So good. So we'll we'll pick those both up at the next meeting and try to get, try to get those charters done and get those moving. Uh, next topic, item 15, Commonwealth Community Compact Applications and Action Item. The board will consider authorizing the chair of the board and the town manager to submit an application on behalf of the town. Mr. Kamali, you want to cover this? Yes. Um, this is an initiative that was put out um, by the Baker administration, allowing the towns and cities of Massachusetts to partner with the administration. Uh, in, in moving best practices initiatives forward. Um, we had a preliminary uh, meeting with the Lieutenant Governor, um, Karen Polito, who outlined the major goals of this initiative. Um, and subsequent to that meeting, the state advertised and published and declared the process open. Um, the process allows for for towns to partner with the state in moving forward initiatives and projects that are community-based, grassroots-driven. Um, these are projects that are not necessarily driven by, by the state. Uh, I need to underscore that. There's also no expectation that the, the, that, that the towns will be expending a great deal of money um, uh, towards this effort. Uh, it's a voluntary association uh, between the, the state and the town. Thus, thinking about the best practice opportunities uh, for Hawkington, uh, the, the following come to mind. Um, number one, I think the town has done a great job in building public-private partnerships that we can share as a model for other towns and cities in Massachusetts. What comes to mind uh, are, are the following projects that the town has undertaken over the years. Number one, the partnership that the town built with Legacy Farms in moving forward the East Hopkinton Master Plan. Number two, the, the partnership that we have built with some of the technology firms uh, here in Hopkinton in helping them establish Hopkinton as their home base. Um, Case in point, the TIF that we signed, uh, that the board signed uh, <laughs> with Peck and Elma, uh, the wonderful relationship that we have had with EMC over the years uh, is another example. Uh, and remember that that relationship with EMC also extends uh, to the work that we do on the school side. Uh, it also has impacted some of the work that we do uh, relative to technology. Um, second area of interest would be um, in fact, this is the, another area that we can build into to the application. Um, it's the, the work that we're doing in uh, land conservation. Um, what just went through the uh, investments that were approved at town meeting in land purchases that, that move forward that agenda. Um, we've also, over the years, signed uh, a significant number of CR that, that grow the footprint of uh, 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 open space in town. Uh, there is an open space master plan that the town uh, approved uh, was it early this year or late last year. Uh, and we have a standing committee that is part and parcel of the local government institutions in town. Um, and uh, uh, I think a third, a third area of interest uh, is the, 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 the potential uh, for uh, expanding community-based agriculture in town. Uh, remember, the town has supported and expanded the concept of a farmer's market. 
I think it's, a, it's now a thriving enterprise. Uh, it's, it's, it's become part, part and parcel of the fabric of the community. Um, we, everybody's looking forward to uh, being at the common on Sundays to attend the, the farmer's market. Uh, we've also, I think as, as, as demonstrated in the board's uh, recent uh, discussion on the platform, we're talking about uh, uh, the potential of the CSA. So broadly speaking, um, again, the request here is for uh, the board to consider authorizing the chair and the town manager to submit an application that potentially could address those three areas as best management uh, practice areas that the town could put forth in this partnership with the state. Okay. Well, Mr. Marjan. Quick question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Norman, you, meant, you mentioned this would be at great cost. Did I hear that right? At no, it's expected that it would be at no cost. At no cost. I thought at I heard no say. Cost. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you for clarifying that. I, I advocate for this. I think, uh, I think it's a good approach to try to formalize the, the workflow process. It's just kind of like a, a large scale project management approach. Um, and bring communities in and be more productive. So uh, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Okay. Mrs. Sestar. No questions. Thank you. Mr. Hart. I think the governor and the lieutenant governor are doing a great job trying to reach out to local communities and forge relationships. And uh, I fully support what we're doing here. Okay. Mr. Catino. Yeah, it's a, it's a tech sandbox for best, best practices. And uh, I think it's a great thing. Okay. So if there's no comments, I guess, uh, let's see, what do we look for? The chair to entertain a motion for the board to authorize a chair and the town manager to design and submit an application, a Commonwealth Community Compact application on so, behalf of the town. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, any direction you want to give? Anything else? No? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting. That passes unanimously. So we'll get working on that. Okay. Next <clears> up <throat> is an annual... Obligation annual committee town appointments. It's an action item. The board will review the expiring terms of respective board and committee members and will consider appointing individuals for various terms as outlined in the supporting exhibit below. We have a number of exhibits. We have the annual board and committee reappointments list. We have the list of new board and committee appointments. We also have a set of supporting exhibits. As we all know, um, appointments carry through the end of each fiscal year uh, or until a successor is, uh, is appointed. So these folks have been okay in their jobs, but we do need to formally reappoint them at some point. Uh, Ms. Kamalo, any further comments on this? Um, no further comments other than uh, to mention that in the past, when the board has gone through these appointments, uh, we've also included the appointment of uh, town council. Um, mm. I, I wanted to mention this. Okay. Which is not listed on, in an automatic list. Okay. Mr. Sestari, we'll start with you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank, you know, all these folks, not only the people on this list, but people who aren't up for renewal or seeking reappointment this year uh, for their contributions to the town and the community. Um, you know, there's, there's, Dozens and dozens of people who put in uh, a lot of hours away from their family, away from their jobs, and it's to benefit the community. And the community wouldn't be what it is without their, without their time and effort. Um, that said, this is a long list of people, and I shouldn't even say that it's a long list of people. It's a long list of positions that we're looking at reappointing people and it's because they're seeking reappointment, and we haven't given any opportunity to open up the position to see if other people are interested as well. And I'm not sure if it's anything that's feasible this year because we're already into this fiscal year, and I'm sure many, if not all, of these terms have already expired as of July 1 on a technical level. Um, but I think at the very least in future years, we should come up with some type of a policy whereby the positions that are for at-large positions that are coming up for uh, renewal or, you know, that, that are lapsing in that year, we're able to post them ahead of time so that we can find out if there's interest uh, from other people in the community. 
Uh, ideally, I would love to see something like this be put up while we're at town meeting and we have somewhat of a captive audience uh, so that we can show people all the different positions. Maybe that can be happening uh, you know, while we're working on rewording uh, some, of, some of the articles or things of that nature. But at any rate, trying to bring an awareness to people and as much as I appreciate people who want to seek their reappointment, uh, I don't think that it should be an automatic thing where I've been here for three years, I want to do it another three, you know, so, you know, I'm going to be the only one who's applying. <clears throat> That's that's my thought, and I would love, uh, you know, if the board would consider. And I don't know what, again what the ramifications would be, if we could do that. If we could start this year, and say, hey, let's let's post all of these so that people can uh, see if there's anything they're interested in, and we'll make, uh, you know, we'll go through the regular decision making process we do for for new spots that are open or new committee members being appointed. And we do that in September or something that, something like that. But I know that might be more complicated. Mr. Gattino. Wow. Tough one to follow. Um, yeah, it, 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 you make some very good points um, because uh, it really shouldn't be automatic. It, it ends up a lot of times being automatic because, you know, in the past we, we've had a tough time filling some of these. But I, I believe with a lot of public awareness, Things you know, people understanding how, how important it is to be part part of a board. Um, they may uh, we may get some takers, but uh, it's just a, it's a big list. It's a, it, it's great to see. I'm good. Okay, Mr. Hart. Um, so I'm not aware of any boards or committees or what have you that we're talking about here this evening that over the past year have been problematic for the community. Uh, in years past, there's been the occasional flare-up of certain situations, and we've had to make some changes just because every now and then change is good. Uh, I'm not aware of any that went on last year, um, and I don't know of any that have lingered for several years now that are still with us. Uh, that said, you know, if, if we're in a pretty good position, I think we need to reappoint to keep everything moving forward. Uh, but I like the idea a lot of advertising this at town meeting even if you just put it up on the sidewalls for you know the entire town meeting so people as they meander around can check it out and see if they want to do something else. Uh, but if there's no obvious problem today, then you know I think we need to go ahead and get something done. If there are some obvious situations, let's talk about those and hold those off perhaps. Okay, Mr. Mosher. Uh, good conversation. I'm just uh Wondering if I could jump the gun from a practical standpoint and make a motion to reappoint Ray Mears as town council. Um, so can, can <laughs> that would be jumping the gun. <laughs> yeah, it would, we jumped the gun. Can, we, can, I, can I ask you to hold that in abeyance until we, because um, we will come to the town. Chair. But do you have any comments on on these appointments that were already none none that are different from my colleagues? Okay, fine. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I'd just like to uh, address a comment that Mr. Herr uh, made, and and I just want to, you know, be clear. I don't see that there are any issues with any of the committees. That's not what I was implying. Um, no, I'm not just, suggesting that. This is just just this is just from a matter of um, yeah, you know inclusion, allowing people to see what's out there, what's available, and making sure that people have a shot at at least presenting their names for for positions that are coming due. Yeah, and my comments had nothing to do with that. Yep, approach, I didn't think so. Mr. Kamala, you have something to say? Yeah, if, if I may, the information that is made public via the town website identifies the kind of vacancies and also there's a second category, terms that are expiring, and people can select each other and they can identify those positions. But your point is well taken in terms of perhaps aggressively advertising the from my perspective, I think what we tend to do is collect those names, and then when we have an opening, we'll go to those people. I think Mrs. Sestar's point, which is well taken, which is every year we should go to those people and say, okay, we're reappointing. Do you want to put your name in the hat to get, to get appointed? And so I think, I think there's a middle ground here. I mean, That no had been a past practice. Yeah. So I think what we should do, Ms. Kamala, is every single year, if anybody's got their name in, we should go in them con and confirm they still want to be considered. And if they are, they should get in the mix, and we should interview. Yeah, we yeah. build that concept into each 
January at sent quarterly announcements, mm -hmm. we will build that concept into the Okay, but that's how I think next year needs to go. It needs to it needs to it needs to put a put a letter out to everybody that says, just what I just said. I mean, right? We're gonna we're gonna we're looking for a list of interested parties for X committee. Here's all and people who are on, you know, may or may not get preference. But that doesn't. It's not. These aren't sinecures. Yeah. The only thing the only thing I would say is we need to make sure you know we're following whatever rules. If a term expires on July 1st, can we still post it on June 1st so that, mm -hmm. you know, in July we can hit the ground running? But again, we could automatically post all of them. We could just blanket post them, I think, and just say all these terms are expiring, right? But we, we're not doing a good service to people if they put their name in the list and we just let their name sit on some list until the opening comes up. Those people have a right to be, to be considered in the fiscal year in which they submit their name. I think that's where we're at. Yeah. Okay, so with that comment made and that practice maybe looked at going forward and some thought about maybe doing something at town meeting, Mr. Mojo, I'll come back to you because you had a motion. I'll make a motion uh, the board reappoint Ray Mears as town council. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any further discussion on that topic? Um, just one, one comment. I know that at one point, I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before, we were talking about having a more formal uh, review process of town council as well on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that we want to pursue prior to reappointment, or is it something that we want to try to formalize for next year? And I have no problem with Mr. Mieras, by the way. Uh, I, I will be voting in the affirmative for this whenever it comes up. But you may have an opinion. I, I do remember that. Um, I would say I would say let's uh, let's give it the go ahead for next year so we don't hold up the appointment just just practical matter getting it done because we're all still free to to send any comments that we yep. have uh, okay good um, are we I just want to make sure we're good with that because it's not in the agenda he's not listed are we going to have a have a legal problem with doing this can we ask town council or can we not right now? <laughs> so he's not an employee. He's not a an employee of the town. He's a contract yep. employee. So we can just do. So we don't we have to have him present. It's more about not being on the agenda. Is what I'm more stressed. Oh, about. I see what you're saying. Um, I guess I would say. I guess I'll I'll take the chance and I'll say because it's it's a necessity of the town have a town council. So what do you, I mean? Do you think we need to push it, or do you think we can get away with that? Is there a driving reason we should do this and tonight and not not have it on the agenda? Okay, so we're already late. So what's the heck? All right, so let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's say we did it because it's again it's a necessity for the town, um, and it was an it was an administrative oversight, and then. Once we've appointed the town council, we can ask him his opinion out as to whether we did it in a valid fashion. Good? And then we can evaluate about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President not noting. Town council is reappointed unanimously. Uh, do we have any other motions? I move to approve the list. Oh, sorry. Oh, can, so, sorry. Uh, can we come back to that one? Because I got Mr. Catino already reading a motion. Yeah, I move to approve the list of annual board and committee reappointments as printed in the selectman packet. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Do we have further discussion? Um, uh, no. Okay. Uh, motion, second, no further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting. So that list is, is uh, done unanimously. Mr. Coutinho, you want to make another motion? Yeah, I move to approve the list of new board and committee appointments as printed in the selectman packet. Okay, we have a motion. Second. second. And we have a second. We have further discussion. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimous as well. We now need to do Town Labor Council. All right. So, I'm not um, saying his last name to anybody. I'll okay. make a motion to appoint uh, Nick Astonopoulos as Town Labor Council. Did I get that right? Yeah. Mary oh, I'm Mary sorry. Connell. Yeah. Motion to appoint Mary Connell for as Town Labor Council. Okay, so we have a motion. Second. And Mr. Kerr, you have a question. I don't ever recall us appointing Labor Council. I thought Town Council brings in Labor Council. 
you sure? You're right. I don't it's remember doing that either. I think it's always I don't on, think I've ever on a blanket list. He is not hired by you Ray. just voted off a list, you're saying? He is not Yeah, we've just, it's always been a list. It just, we just blast through it. We just huh. left the list off. Okay. We left off the list this year. He's not hired by Tom Thompson. He's hired by us directly. Okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, present, not voting. That's unanimous as well. Anything else we need to do, Mr. Kamal, on that front? Bless you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Layers and reports, Mr. Mosier. Not at this time, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Harr. Not at this time. Mr. Sistari. Not Mr. Coutinho. Wow. I already spoke about one. <coughs> Arts on the Trail. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, um, it was a great event. It was well attended. Um, there are still some um, sculptures and such up. I, I recommend everybody going and check it out. It, was, uh, it's, uh, it just really enhances our trail network. Um, which brings me to the um, Trails Network, where the final release of the uh, Connolly School um, Master Plan for the Trails mm. came up. And um, it's, uh, it, it's really coming together. And I really um, uh, encourage people to take a look at it and see what uh, the uh, trail system can become. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, my only report was the 300th, and we heard about that earlier at length. Um, next item, Tom Andrews report, Mr. Kamal. In, in, in fact, through, through the chair, uh, I, I believe you already gave the bulk of the updates. Sorry, the, still the, your yeah. the only thing I want to add is to specifically recognize the efforts of um, Maria again in the office. She's, she's now literally the project manager. Okay. Maria, well, nice job. <laughs> well done. All right, future, anything else, Mr. Kamal, in the Tom Rangers report? Future board agenda items, Mr. Harr. Uh, I'd love to talk about the wave start in the marathon somehow, in some way. <laughs> okay. Parade permit time. I mean, a lot of people in town comment on how it gets stretched out, so at some point. Okay. Nothing urgent. Mr. Coutinho. Yeah, I'd like to get an update on the uh, Charter Commission and see how that's coming along. Um, and the second one, I'd like to, to look into um, public parking options and what may be able to be purchased or leased or th that we can start discussing that because um, it's, uh, it, it's best for growth in the, in the, in for the downtown and the whole town at all. Good stuff. Mr. Mosher. Not at this time, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Sestari. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, over the last few months I've been spending a lot of time on my bike and I've been riding through all different towns around Hopkinton. And recently, in the last two to three weeks, I've noticed that it's paving season. And as I'm going through other towns, I'll uh, unexpectedly uh, all of a sudden hit some scarified pavement and have to go on a stretch for a quarter mile or a mile and then hit a bump come on to some old pavement and then go on to some more scarified pavement. But I know that in the next couple of weeks it's all going to be smoothed out and that's going to be good. Um, I'm not sure if I'm just not going to the right parts of Hopkinton, but I haven't seen us doing any of any work on our roads yet. And so I would like to have an update from the DPW director uh, that encompasses what roads uh, we planned to work on for the year, what's been completed, what's in progress, and what's coming up so that we can all be in the know. There has been a noticeable lack of asphalt going down in town this summer. Yes, but check your inboxes. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Sestari did raise this issue earlier. Um, I think it was yesterday. It, it, last minute. Yeah. I, oh. yeah so. <laughs> but but the, response, the response by the GIS team was spectacular. Um, right. I just forwarded to the board a map depicting the the extent of the pavement management program, work planned, work completed, and work pending. Okay. We need a new paver rater. One minute ago. <laughs> we'll evaluate that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Chair, I want to take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, President, voting. That's unanimous. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Good night, everybody.